another case of Transformers doing naughty things in the background. <laughs> you know, you I need mean, to really change your music choices. <laughs> I am not. Because I get pumped listening to dubstep. You guys, you guys can be all all sad and puffy and whatever. I, I'm, I'm going to continue to play dubstep. What do you like? Did you I love call dubstep. me puffy? Maybe. Oh my goodness. It's on now, buddy. <laughs> I know a guy with a gun. <laughs> I'm a guy with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> not like, you know, I was gonna not say, a gun gun. Like, a you know, uh, what is what do they call it? The pink gun. There's a pink certain pink gun that a certain guy knows about that we're gonna talk about later, and I can't wait. <laughs> uh, oh 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 oh! And, oh. and Husby actually just gave me a machete. I have one of those too, but that's like traditional in Hispanic households. So I mean, yeah, I'm not allowed to use the machete. I don't know we, why he gave it to me. We tend to have machetes in the house. That's just. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this going. <laughs> oh, God. We're already off the rails. It's just it's a regular, regular iteration of when Phil and Frey are doing an entire week together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's start the show. Ready. Me and Frey are already arguing. As always. <laughs> but it's always a friendly argument. We don't argue because it's like, oh, I, I hate what you say. We, <laughs> yeah. It's like, we use. You're usually, right, but I'm going to tell you why I'm brighter. That's, that's basically it. Like, we never <laughs> actually disagree on anything. <laughs> <laughs> but yet we still argue a lot. Anyway, a ladies and gentlemen. You are now <laughs> tuned in to your favorite Thursday show. It is now time for the build. And boy, I think I'm going to be finishing up tonight uh, on the the friends apartment. Oh, cool! Uh, while we can, while we talk to our uh, to our guests tonight, uh, Say Wong in the chat asking, "Is there no graveyard? Uh, graveyard will be showing up later in the show." Mm -hmm. uh, fairy fan, welcome to the show. Hi, fairy fan. Uh, but yes. Hi, Say Wong. Hi, Darren. Aaron Hi, Watson Aaron. A A Aaron himself, the uh, Agent Double A. Agent Double A. We will be talking about his feet later. All right. So <laughs> don't forget he, the mandals. And, and he knows it. We always talk about <laughs> mandals. You know, it's funny. He does not own mandals. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that joke came out of nowhere. And I was like, no, I'm running with it for the rest of our career. Like, in, in rest of forever. Yes, I'm always going to haunt gonna... people and all they're going to hear is mandals. Exactly. And, and, and <laughs> what I want everybody to picture is like he has like raptor claws. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Distance Nerding. Welcome to the build. Uh, so before we get into all the substance and all the other things that we're going to do here, let's go ahead and uh, take care of uh, paying the bills and everything like that. Because ladies and gentlemen, this channel, everything we do here is brought to you by pod decks yes ladies and gentlemen pod decks are unique interview question and episode starting prompt in the palm of your hand so whether you are a new podcaster or an existing broadcaster looking to grow your audience or get more engagement level up with pod decks now guys all you got to do uh to to kind of uh participate with the pod decks and the lovely things that they have is download the pod decks app and if you decide to purchase anything use the code nerding 10 and get 10 percent off your order it is awesome we use it for every interview that we do every everything that we do as far as uh, any shows or anything like that um we're going to be using it tonight we're going to be using uh pod decks uh in the future uh in two weeks when we go to idaho and interview a whole bunch of people in idaho so yes uh, we will right you are correct right, right. <laughs> you are correct sir now you know if pod decks is what powers distance starting uh -huh. You got to ask yourself, what powers young Phil? Oh, well, 
I know exactly what powers him. It is Dubby, everyone. This is why it he is. likes dubstep so much. Oh, yeah, but exactly. It's, it's the Dubby. It's the Dubby. <laughs> Dubby is a brand of energy drinks that emerged at some point in time and it creates, it created, they created it and emerged it to help focus. Clearly I need it as well. Concentration, reaction time with no jitters or crash. Not like coffee. Uh, no mal maltodextrin. I'm not saying it right. He says it better. Sugar fillers, artificial colors, or dyes and it is keto friendly so you know you can keep your diet dubby contains neurofactor a nootropic derived from the coffee fruit neurofactor helps give your brain focus and clarity while the 150 milligrams of caffeine and three essential b vitamins help you stay alert and energized Find out more at www.w.gg. Use the code NERDING10 for 10% off at checkout. You know, what's funny is this is an actual thing. I get asked on a regular basis, how can you conduct an interview and build Lego at the same time without losing your mind? It's it's the W. It helps me focus. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> also, also the a ADHD. So you have to do multiple things at once. But I mean, you know, W. Wrong. You're not wrong at all. It is the ADHD. Moment. It is everything. Uh, <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. So with that all being said, uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let everybody in the chat choose flavors. Uh, now, I do have two new flavors that we tested out over the course of this week. Uh, I have a sour gummy bear and I have a cherry limeade. What do we want to mix tonight? Hmm. You know what? Should we should we bring on the guests and have them also also yeah. say? Yeah, let's do that. Sure. And then that way I can give them a, a, a list of all of the flavors that I have. <laughs> yes. Like, that sounds good. <laughs> Go with that. And yeah. really, it, let's really over like overpower. <laughs> overpower them before the we like, <laughs> ask them lots of questions. Exactly right. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, today's guest is a filmmaker, writer, producer, director, musician, plus so much more. Uh, here to talk about his latest film, Sky Hoshi Anime Girl. Uh, actually, before I bring him on, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the the trailer here. Uh, I, have, I have that ready just for everybody to uh, check this out. So, uh, Look at that. you're so professional. I know, right? I'm just going ahead of my script. So. Uh, <laughs> Let's check this out real quick, guys. Okay. <laughs> Wish Sky Hoshi was real. She'd probably be all nice and that she'd have ramen with me. <laughs> Hold it right there. Where the hell did you even come from? Sky Hoshi, the anime character, has just disappeared from the anime. What? This is insane. She's gotta get you back to the anime. That is a customer that you just zapped! Oh man, oh. sorry. <laughs> Not, not gonna lie, that's probably one of my favorite parts. <laughs> just... <laughs> uh, and he's just like, wait, what? 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 what did, you, did you just shoot him? <laughs> I said it's a stun. Okay, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show. Uh, <laughs> let me get to the right screen here. <laughs> to the show, Kalani Hubbard. <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> Pretty good, man. How are you? I'm great. What an intro! Wow. <laughs> We try, we try. We gotta Thanks build, for having we, me. We gotta build it up, man. This is just we're anticipating it already. We're like jumping all <laughs> over the place. It's just uh again, ADHD brain. We're just jumping around. So love it. Here for He's it. also not used to my exuberance, I guess. Because <laughs> normally graveyards here and he's real chill. <laughs> so, <laughs> graveyards are the other host. Balancing it all, you know. <laughs> right. Exactly. Now we're just unhinged. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the two most unhinged hosts. <laughs> really, yes. With no straight man. This is this is gonna go off the rails. Uh, there you go. There you go. 
<laughs> so just enjoy the ride. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the show, man. Uh, so well, let's let's jump right into this, Kalani. Uh, before we get into your story, before we start getting into uh, everything uh, as far as your film and everything goes, uh, we want to learn a little bit more about you. We want to know about kind of what ticks in the mind of Kalani Hubbard, right? Oh. So we've got two questions for you here, right? Okay. The first one. If a film were made about your life, who would play you and why? Oh, who would play me? Yeah. Oh my God. What a what a what a great answer. Or answer. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh what a great question. I need to think of a good answer for this. I've never thought of this ever. Wow. I always who catch everybody off guard with this one. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. Who would play me in a movie about me? Well, I would hope that um I would hope it would be somebody. Oh, let's think. Wow. This is a, I'm giving you like the worst answer, which is no answer right now. I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm really trying to think about this one. It would be well, like like I mean, who who like do you feel like in your life, like are you the like indie cool kid? Are you the geeky nerdy guy? Are you the like secret jock who really likes musical theater? I mean like it, Think about I would say that. the first two combined. I'm somewhere in between the first two. Somewhere in between the first two. I'll stop. I, me and sports <laughs> do not get along. I'll say that much. All right. So, yeah. so um, we're talking like a Killian Murphy, maybe younger Killian Murphy, maybe a, um, oh, whoever, like a, whoever a Timothy is, Chalamet, a little, you know, that kind of like ingenue. Yeah, who, whoever it is, person. they'll have to listen to a lot of The Strokes and a lot of Weird Al at the same time to really mm. find my essence. You know? Maybe David, uh, Daniel Radcliffe then. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> Done. Right? Just because he played Weird Al and you know at some I point hear, he yes. listened to the show. <laughs> he, Done. He told, I mean, okay. He the, would have to wear a wig, but right. I, I'm sure he'd be okay with that. I'm sure he could grow his hair out. I mean, like, think about like when he grew out his hair for Goblet of Fire. Like, I mean, oh, yeah, his hair too long for Goblet of Fire. There there okay. Uh, Good answer. So, it, it is. Uh, uh, the next question here. We have a segment on the show called Growing Up Geeky. What did you geek out on when you were a kid? Oh, man. Pokemon all the way. Grew up uh, playing Pokemon, trading Pokemon. You know, I was a trainer at the ripe age of 10. Uh, wow. All the way, all the way until now. Um, so Pokemon was always a big one for me. Star Wars, of course. Um, love me some Star Wars and Pokemon. Those are my two mains um That's cool. anything nintendo really i grew up on nintendo so i just okay. uh love it all that's awesome yeah like yeah i mean that nintendo it was more like a cultural phenomenon like the whole thing there for a while so i feel like you know unless you were like in a cave a hermit or like <laughs> um i don't know a cranky old man uh you probably didn't so, know so me and graveyard like, you know, basically yeah yeah you and graveyard that's good <laughs> The yeah. cranky old men fill in graveyard. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> awesome, man. Um, well, that's amazing. So um, how old were you when you knew you wanted to get into film? Oh, I mean, I I kind of always, like growing up, have I always was just kind of uh, making things, like telling stories. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I always uh, wanted to do film from from as long as I can remember, just being a little kid. Um, I would take my dad's like tape camera and uh, <laughs> make little stop action videos or or make, uh, you know, I'd get older and, and make I used to make skate videos with my friends all the time. So we would like skateboard and stuff oh, um, awesome. and made short films growing up. And so, yeah, I was always always a storyteller, always trying to tell stories, have fun. And uh, a big part of that is is having fun with friends, making something, making something cool. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just always doing it and still doing it. <laughs> right? So, yeah, yeah, obviously. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like, so when did you realize that it was like your talent? Like, when did you go like, no, this is what I, this is my bliss, my passion. Like, this is what I actually, I know like you can like, as a kid be like hey we're gonna goof and do videos and stuff and it's gonna be like fun and mm. maybe we'll put it on the internet or whatever yeah nowadays yeah. back when i was a kid we you know yeah we didn't have, well, that we didn't have the internet so much back then <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true uh, but like when did you like figure out this this is it this is this is what i, I wanted like, to do. 
Yeah, I was. Uh, people started asking me to 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 make things. Um, so I would just like make videos and have fun or whatever. And then you know, I had somebody ask me like, "Hey, uh, that, that was a really good video. Do you do weddings?" I was like, oh. "Weddings? What?" <laughs> and, uh, and so um, I was in I was uh, in junior high, and I got my first paid gig. Um, uh, one of my teachers was getting married and he was like, Hey, you're really good with the camera. Like I've seen your work. Um, <laughs> and he paid me, I don't, I don't even know. It was like an obscene amount of money when I was that young, <laughs> um, young but, um, now I think it was like a hundred bucks or something. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but I was just like, I'm rich. Oh my God. Thousand dollars as a teenager. Like, Oh yeah. He gave me like a hundred bucks. I can bucks. retire now. Oh yeah. That was, Oh, I could buy so many Nesquicks with that. Um, <laughs> You know, so uh, it was fun. It was fun. Uh, and so, you know, I would I would um, in school, I would always uh, ask my teachers, you know, I, it, whenever there was like a project, like a writing project or whatever, I'd always be like, can I make a video? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, most of the time they'd be like, you know what? Why not? So that was the only way I passed Spanish class. Uh, my Spanish wasn't good, but they loved my uh, my sketches. <laughs> Oh, there you go. See, so they're like, you know what? I can tell you put a lot of work into this. Your Spanish isn't great, but <laughs> these are hilarious. You know, um, I, didn't, I didn't take Spanish in high school mainly because I was well aware that, like, you know, I don't speak Castellano Spanish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like I'm failing because I'm speaking, you know, Central American Spanish and <laughs> <laughs> use the same words. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. From from that to uh, you know, writing projects in school, you know, essays or whatever, I'd always be like, so about a uh, video, is that a possibility? <laughs> um, so he always grew up doing that. It was just a lot of fun. Uh, and so I really, I like, I had a knack for it. People really enjoyed it, you know. And they would, um, you know, we would show it to the class or whatever, and then like it would be kind of the thing everybody was talking about all day, you know, they're like, Oh, mm -hmm. like they would show it to the next class and the next <laughs> class and people would be asking to watch the video, you know, and it's like, not even the, the they're not even supposed to watch the video. <laughs> they're not that in the class. class. Yeah. They're not yeah. in the class, you know? <laughs> um, so it was fun. You know, I, I always uh, had a good time making things and entertaining and, um, and, you know, a big part of it is, is having fun with your friends and creating art, you know, and I'm a musician. Uh, so I've always been in bands, you know, growing up to, Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's something really special about making friends and then like making art with your friends, you know, yeah. it's just fun and, and cool. And, um, and so, yeah, that's, that's kind of where it all started. Uh, oh. and now I just kind of try to always get better at it and, and always continue to take everything that I've learned and get better every time and, and make more things. So, um, yeah, Skyhoshi Anime Girl is, uh, the, the latest release and I'm very, proud of it. it it was it was a wild ride and it was a lot of fun to make so yeah. so yeah no and like i watched it i thought it was I, I thought it was so cute and we are gonna talk about that here in a second we got Sweet. a little more pre-question yeah no i really get into that pink hair little beauty there <laughs> but uh <laughs> all right so uh so where did you were talking about school where did you where did you go to school where did you matriculate from oh um well i grew up in california Oh, okay. So I went to school in California in the Bay Area. In the what Bay Area, you're really one of us, man. I, so our show is based out of Sacramento. Oh no way! But I'm from San Francisco originally, man. I'm I'm, I'm from I'm from uh, the Mission, born and raised. Oh no way! Yeah, that's cool. I'm uh I grew up in Vacaville, Cowtown. Oh, yeah. oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Funny enough, Frey used to work with a show called um, Kyber Cave. They're actually our sister show, uh, yeah. and they're based out of Vacaville. No yeah, way. Yeah, Small so world. Like Love that. Of, Tell them I I'm said hi. I'm not there now. I'm in Oklahoma. <laughs> so <that's> Okay. <laughs> hey, my, my sister's in Oklahoma. She just moved there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Why? No, um, let, we're getting off topic. Let's yeah, not yeah. talk about how bad <laughs> Oklahoma is. Let's talk oh, about... We're talking about how small the world is. <laughs> right, world exactly. is a small place. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. Like, so, so grew up in California. Know, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. California is a great place to grow up in. Yeah. So. No, it was great. And I, I, I'm a New Yorker now. I've been here for nine years uh so I live in brooklyn um and so that's always that was really cool you know me and my wife we were thinking about moving for a while and so we ended up um we're like you know let's try out new york you know we um we're like it, it seems really cool we we kind of fell in love with it when we um we did like a vacation here once and we're like oh this yeah. is cool i like it uh, and so we, we ended up moving here and um and now you know we work here and, and live here and we make movies here 
And uh, man, New York is such a great place to make movies because everywhere you point your camera, it just looks awesome. And you're like, yeah. okay, yes, <laughs> I'll well, film and, that. <laughs> you can... I was going to ask you too, because I noticed uh, in one of the scenes, I was like, that's the Brooklyn. That, that's Brooklyn. That's, that's yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Everything's in Brooklyn over here. <laughs> but you can like, you can also like film down a street and people just like, even if you don't know, it's like New York, you feel that vibe. Like it's that, it's just that kind of, you. it's so recognizable. So I, I think that that's great that, because you can literally point your camera and be like, hey, yeah. look, there's something else I can film. You know? Yeah, so exactly. That's amazing. Yeah, everything just looks great. And um, I love filming here in New York because everybody's just so desensitized to everything. So nobody cares. You know what I mean? It's great. You're just like People outside just, filming stuff. Yeah, you know? I'm walking here. I don't care. Yeah, what I'm everybody yeah. just ignores you. <laughs> hey, this you fucking guy, get on my fucking way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Where's the craft services table? <laughs> yeah, where's the you table? You got one? Yeah. Can I get a coffee? You yeah. know, it's like that kind of thing. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, so you've lived on both coasts. That's I have. very impressive. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, but like, so as you were growing up and you're going to school and everything, who, who did you like gravitate to? Like, who were your inspirations and who, who do you feel that like really kind of, um, helped shape who you are as a creative? Oh man. I would say like Steven Spielberg. I'm like, mm -hmm. I love, every movie he's made i just like i'm always studying his craft like the way he creates movies um mm -hmm. and the trifecta for me is uh steven spielberg robert zemeckis and george lucas those are like my three um i love them so much and uh <laughs> i i study their films I, I watch all the behind the scenes i read the scripts i geek out real hard over all of their work and um Hey, yeah, it's nothing. like there's they're really good guys. So I totally get it. <laughs> yes. Everything they touch is is amazing. And so um yeah, they they're just really big inspiration to me. You know, I um I love I love just being able to watch a movie and just be taken to another world or or get excited about like the possibility of something happening, like, oh, dinosaurs could be real, you know, or yeah. you know, like, well, what would happen if an alien actually did come to Earth? You know, you have ET. Yeah. Um, and so for me, those are the, those are the movies that made me want to make movies. Those are the movies that got me inspired. Um, and that, you know, that's one of the things that made me kind of make the name pure magic pictures is mm -hmm. because like, I was thinking, well, what, what are the things that I feel like? What's, what's the thing that I feel that I love about movies so much? And it's that pure magic, you know, it's the pure mm -hmm. magic of a movie. It's the, it's the taking you to another world or experiencing something exciting, you know? And so that magic of movie making, like really, it really hits me. So, <laughs> That's um, awesome. yeah. So, you know, th those were like my, my main inspirations, uh, still, you know, um, I just absolutely love those types of films. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so did you, so you said uh, you started wedding, like you did a wedding in junior high. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. how did it progress after that? Did you like do like commercial work first? Oh did yeah. You just and go right into film? Yeah. So I started, um, I got an internship at a production house in California, like pretty young. And, uh, I was just, you know, working there for free. And then they're like, Hey, uh, do you want a job here? And I was like, sure. And so I ended up getting, uh, cause I was volunteering anyway. And that's so like, they gave me a summer job. And then I ended up working there for eight years. Uh, <laughs> I was like, it was a long summer. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I worked on all sorts of things, um, and learned a lot along the way and just like real world experience, like working on stuff. Um, and, and then from there I started like freelancing. So in the Bay area, so many tech companies and, you know, startups and all that stuff. So yeah. I started, um, you know, I started working on commercial work and stuff as a freelancer too. And, um, you know, long story short, I ended up moving to New York. I started uh, my own like small production company. And so I've been uh, doing production ever since um, just as my own company, me and my wife work together. So she's a producer. I'm like a director, editor. Um, and so, yeah, it's been great. So it, it's been really cool because we make indie movies, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. It's not like the studio is just us. It's like me and my wife and a small team of us. Um, and so the cool thing is that I've been able to take all of these skills that I've learned over the years and like apply that to my own projects. And so, you know, I've done visual effects on like a, a Campbell's soup commercial and a Redbox yeah. commercial. 
Um, And so, and, you know, so those types of clients, obviously they have a very high standard, like it has to be really good. And, you know, it has to get past their quality control department, (laughs) you know? And so because I have had to work on uh, four companies like that and create some like high level stuff, um, I'm able to make stuff that really is kind of like at a high level for like Mm -hmm. a low budget because it's me on a computer, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah, you're so. Um, You're doing it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it makes it uh, possible for us to make like very impactful, exciting movies mm-hmm. um, for uh, indie budget, essentially. Um, and so that's how like Sky Hoshi has a laser gun. And it's like, whoa, cool. How'd you do that? It's like, yeah. wow. I, uh, I used to do visual effects on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, I know how to do it. <laughs> I know how to make a laser. Yes. <laughs> Lasers are cool. Lasers and explosions. <laughs> I, I mean, there were a couple of different visual effects that I was like, oh man, these are, uh, yeah. these are surprisingly high level for an indie film, man. They, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that 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 kind of explains that. I was actually, I had a question about the uh, about the the laser gun itself. Um, I mean, again, my, I might as well jump into it. Sure. Uh, we do have other Wait. questions, but I mean. <laughs> I was going to say, we have some stuff in here about Fenton's ice cream. Oh, Fenton's. <laughs> Who said Fenton's? I remember so, that. James, James is saying he misses Fenton's. Yeah. He James. Misses Fenton's now. James is, uh, he's our our other main host, but he never does Thursday shows. So Yes. Okay. No, I, I grew up, uh, I used to go to Pete's Coffee in the Nut Tree, oh. uh, like yes. Plaza. And there was Fenton's like right there. So we would go to Fenton's every now and then. Um, and yes, good times. Shout out, <laughs> Vacaville, Nut Tree Plaza. Yeah, and so then James said, everything they touch except the Star Wars holiday special. No, I will defend the hot, <laughs> I will do a hot take and say, the Star Wars holiday special is so horrible, it's awesome. <laughs> I watch it every single year. I force, I force my wife and all of my friends, we throw a holiday special party and we oh. celebrate life day. And That's we awesome. watch the holiday special every year and everybody's groaning the whole way, <laughs> but man, it's still a lot of fun. Okay. Okay. Uh, j- just to go with you on this, right? Without the holiday <laughs> special, we'd have no Boba Fett. So. We would, yes. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And the Mandalorian wouldn't have had his amazing like laser cannon gun that like incinerated people. I mean, we got some uh, good uh, cannon right there. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yes, they did. <laughs> Which means that if if the holiday special is canon because that's how, where we got those characters, that means that Chewie does have a family. Mm. Uh, I think uh, Lumpy, w- w- Lumpy, and <laughs> Lumpy was one of them. <laughs> Lumpy and Itchy or something. I don't even remember. It yeah. has been this I have slept family. since I watched it last. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would be groaning what a fe- if I what were a fever there. dream of a yeah. of a movie that is. <laughs> I thought Itchy was a stripper from Miami. <laughs> uh, it's not exclusive. It could be both. It could be so both. That's it probably saying. is. <laughs> yeah. You know, Itchy fell on long to- uh, on hard times. <laughs> <laughs> now that now that Kashyyyk's part of the uh, empire, so you know. <laughs> uh, so all right. So back to indie films. All yes. right. So uh, other than your own indie films, mm-hmm. uh, what are your favorite indie films? Oh, I mean, Napoleon Dynamite. I mean, come on. Yeah. That movie's great. Comedy gold. <laughs> Love it so much. Uh, Never you seen it. You Eat your food, Gina. Go on. Yeah. Never seen My it. My lips hurt real bad. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's so good. It, it was the movie that we all quoted way too much in high school, you know? Um, and <laughs> it's still God great. Chase and Dilla. Go with your Chase and Dilla. Yeah. <laughs> Gina, you fat lard. Yeah. Eat your dinner. Oh, the one quote everybody did relentlessly. Do the chickens have large talons? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Chris. oh, Chris. Hello. I love you. Hey, Chris. there's Chris. Chris was, was Chris the comic book store? He owner? was. Yeah. Shout out Chris, Mr. Mario. Comic there we store go. Owner. There he is. Ah, oh, love you, Chris. Glad to, glad uh, and here. I didn't I didn't think that he was like every comic book store owner I've ever met in my <laughs> entire life. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a combination <laughs> of all. Right. <Yeah. laughs> 
So, okay. So, and you said you also, you have been in bands. Yes. And you do music. And I know you did the music on, on Sky Hoshi. Mm -hmm. And so how long have you been like writing and like making music? Like as long as you've been, you picked up camera and then you, what, did you have drumsticks in your hand? (laughs) It kind of happened at the same time. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. One day I just like, today's the day. And I grabbed a drumsticks and a camera and I was like, let's go. (laughs) <laughs> you're um, like it's time to be creative <laughs> yeah i'm like it's time to reach my final form um that's pretty much what happened but uh you went super hovered <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much um but yeah i mean it's lot. i mean i was i think i was in junior high when i got my uh electric guitar for christmas you know i was in junior high yeah and uh i started a band with my friends none of us knew how to play our instruments it was great <laughs> yeah. and we played blink 182 uh we 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 did blink 182 songs but we changed all the words because we liked weird al <laughs> so it was like it was like blink 182 with weird al lyrics oh what a world it was um, <laughs> that is awesome and uh our band was Buzz in harmony uh yeah. i don't know why but it was junior high brain and uh you know that's that's where that's where the music started. Um, so still love pop punk. It's like we're from Vacaville. Papa Roach is from Vacaville. Hey, that's know, right. You can make that's our claim to fame. Exactly. <laughs> and I'll raise you flaming lips. Oh, they're, they're great. They're from Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, they are. I didn't realize that. They're awesome. Um, but yeah, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. So rare candies which love the name yes i love, love it. it okay very and candy. yeah i'm it's trying to cut down on sugar and it made me want to eat sugar the it was whole a very time evident pokemon nerd reference and it's well yeah so good <laughs> <laughs> yes love the pokemon reference um but yeah, I, it, it i was gonna say it feels really like indie rock and it's so well done like it is so like all of the very music sex is bomb. So so yeah, Sex Bobon. Nice. It was very much like that. So, uh, but yeah. So tell us all about that. Tell yeah. Us about that. Before candy. before you jump into there, like you know, oh. Red Candies, the band itself was supposed to be a shitty band. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was supposed to be, but you could have made the music a little more shitty, man. It was, <laughs> <laughs> that was too good. Like I, that, that's the only thing that took me out of it was like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I was so like, funny. why are they not like so excited about this song? <laughs> no, you know, the uh, only thing that, like what took me out of it was like, okay, they're going to go do a a, a a live like like a house show basically, uh, and and like nobody's there to see them, and it's like, oh yeah, we suck, we're terrible. It's like, dude, <laughs> you guys are fucking badass. <laughs> That's so music- funny. The music should have been just a little bit more shit. <laughs> that's a little worse. Just, just that's hilarious. I would have believed it more if the music was just slightly more shitty. Oh, uh, right, next time, next time. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, I some somebody told me. Um, they're like, they said that the um the song that we play in the movie um Tamagotchi. They're yeah. like, they're like, what are they listening to? Tamagotchi is so good. Like, why are they hate? Why are they hating so bad? Yeah. I was thinking the same thing that was yeah. the exact song i was like why is nobody loving this song <laughs> not gonna lie i like be, before the show today i sat there and listened to all three of those songs because they're on apple music so i was like i listened to all three of the songs from this th- th- this movie back to back yes <laughs> thanks yeah. for the screen shit ton of split shit ton of plays right now yes right. <laughs> yeah he just um, had it on a loop he was on a loop like... hey i'm <laughs> that's what it's all about <laughs> um yeah i had a lot of fun making the tunes for that so um so i made um all the music i you know for the band the rare candies um mm. and then my uh composer victor uh victor herrera calvo he's amazing he's fantastic so he did all of like the the like cinematic music Mm-hmm. score for the movie so we have awesome. like the movie's got like the beautiful like cinematic original score um and then the rock and rare candy stands so um yeah. it was a lot of fun to kind of have the contrast between the the music um but yeah like that was kind of i was a the thing that i love so much about sky hoshi is that i was able to take everything i'm good at and i was like cool let's put it all in one movie you know um because yeah. i grew up obviously like in bands and writing music um, and so I was able to take that and and make the band the Rare Candies uh, for the movie. That's awesome. 
And so, yeah, made, made a bunch of uh, nerd rock uh, and had a lot of fun doing it. And then we, yeah, we, um, yeah, did like the music video type stuff for the movie. And yeah, it was good. It was fun. <laughs> so how would the host of Good Magical Morning describe Hoshi, the movie? How would how would they do that? Like, give us the synopsis of it, but do it like Good Magical Morning would. Okay, so I, I'm <laughs> I'm saying it as if I'm telling you like it's a movie, not how we were in the movie where we didn't know what was going on. <laughs> no, you're gonna like it's like you're doing the like, hey guys, there's this movie coming out. Okay, guy, yeah, yeah, there that kind of. I'll thing. give you one of those. Yeah. I'll give you okay. my uh, my best. My best Kalani from Good Magical Morning uh, awesome. telling you about a hot new film that just came out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right, you want I me gotta, to like cue you? I got to get my uh, my coffee mug. It, feels, it only feels right okay. holding get it. In, you know? Get in. Get in. Get in. Is that character. how you got in character was yeah. the coffee? Here we oh, go. The coffee mug. Here we go. Cold coffee. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is from earlier today, but there's still something in it. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning into it. Um, all right. Yes. Hey, Kalani. I heard there's a new movie out. That's right. Yes, there is a brand new movie out. It is called Sky Hoshi Anime Girl. It is zapping your screen right now. And it is about an anime character who becomes real, falls out of her poster, goes missing from the anime, and has to find her way back to her anime before it's destroyed. It is a lot of fun. We got a lot of cool people in the film. And we actually got to film at Anime NYC um put on by crunchyroll so it was a lot of fun it's a great film you should definitely go check it out it's now streaming on puremagicpictures.com so if you have the internet you can watch the film <laughs> so go ahead and check it out it's now streaming there you go bravo bravo that was your hot news it's your hot hot news, news for the day hot news for the day good Do I have slinging hot news bringing <laughs> punk rock slinging news oh i do have the kids all right hold on right here uh, one more time with the clapping of the claps. Hey, oh, hey. <laughs> okay, so James asked, did you go to WC Wood High? No, 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 no. Okay. I do have friends that, that went there. Um, and then he, then he just mentioned Vacacon. Vacacon is oh, next month. <laughs> what is that? I've never even heard of Vacacon. Vacacon's newer, man. They've been doing it for about two years now. Oh, I need to look into this. And then my home was like, you there's know, the back of actually, so cool. Sky Hoshi had a special screening at Brendan Theaters in Vacaville. Wow. Um, that's yeah. Awesome. It's, uh, you know, so. That's amazing. Fun little fact well, thank you for, you for like folks. indulging me in that. Since <laughs> you were in the movie, I thought, hey, he knows about yeah. it. Let's get him to do it. Yes. So. Had to get in oh, character. It yeah. Also, it, you also take direction very well. Thank you. Now, oh. can you do it again? But just, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? What do you need? Louder, louder and more intensity. Louder and more intensity. <laughs> yes. Look at the yes, camera. George Lucas. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I was going to say, so um, Good Magical Morning is an actual show, right? Like you guys actually do that, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's an actual geek news show, um, and uh, we call we just cover all the fun things of fandom um, and geek news. And um, so, yeah, me and me and my my best friend Pep, uh, he's my best friend in real life, and uh, <laughs> we we do the show together. And um, and we're like, it's only right that we yeah. we would we would cover the story of Sky Hoshi in real life. Yeah. So let's cover the story of Sky Hoshi in the movie. Uh, <laughs> That was fun. <laughs> so, I mean, did you, would you say that this movie is, well, obviously, I, I mean, unless you, is, unless that's how you met your wife, is she popped out of a poster and <laughs> fell on top of you, would you say that this is uh, kind of a, like, from your own experiences? You said that a lot of it, a lot of the stuff you like is in it. Would you mm -hmm. say that, are you like more of the Adam character or would you say that you're really Justin in it? Uh, I, uh, <laughs> Justin, uh, I love Justin. What a character. Um, oh, Regina Famatigan's in the chat. Hey, Regina. She plays Kira in the movie. Hey, oh, hey. oh my gosh, Kira. Oh. Kira's, Kira showed up to the, to the live stream. It's so good to wow. see you in the chat. Well, uh, she I wanted is to bring a her bad some bitch in that and I am all for it. I wanted to yes. bring her up on there. I guarantee just because the way that I know actors, right? She's probably like the nicest person in the world, right? Regina is one of my best friends in the world, and she is the nicest person you will ever meet. 
and so, uh, it's hilarious because she does. She plays a very uh, grumpy bass player, well, but she's very it. nice in real life. A testament, a testament to good acting. She's a fantastic <laughs> actor. You know? She made me hate her so <laughs> much. You know, Kira is a very polarizing character. We um, we sh we traveled and we uh, went on tour and we showed Sky Hoshi to a bunch of different fan expos and different anime conventions across the country. Uh, and then, um, and it was a lot of fun and it was crazy because we were getting some like team Kira or team sky thing going on. Like some people were like big Kira fans, you know, yeah. I mean, other people were like, Oh, I didn't like Kira, you know, it's, so it's just really funny. Um, like <laughs> how polarizing that character <laughs> can be sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, no, she, it's, it's, it's it, that just tells me you're a great actor because uh, a, a good example is, uh, God, I got to pull it up right now because I'm all of a sudden forgetting his name. Um, he does this occasionally. Phil. I do, <laughs> yeah. I do. The uh, dubby hasn't kicked in yet. <laughs> <laughs> while he's looking it up though oh so. yeah so, i didn't even answer your question i just got pumped that <laughs> no, yeah, no, um, you're i was fine. gonna say uh john carlo esposito right john carlo esposito i've met him twice he's the nicest dude in existence mm. he talks about how he intentionally picks bad roles and bad characters and really because they're fun to play but ah. he said he says like you know the, the the whole thing is you know he didn't say it. Somebody said, said in an interview with him, but they said, you know, you're a good actor when you can make me hate you like beyond your soul. But when mm. I meet you in real life, you're the nicest person in existence. He goes, yeah. that's yeah. intention. He goes, that's the same thing. His, he told a story about how his daughters, um, you know, uh, his daughters are like uh, teenagers now. So he'll, he'll like threaten them and say like, like or he'll threaten like boyfriends and, and, and like potential guys and whatnot uh, with like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in, you know, remember who I am. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm like every evil character that you've ever uh, like. I'm every yeah, I'm every villain you've ever known. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. like I'm it's... all the bad guys you've ever known rolled yeah. into one, and I'll get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> like... Does it on purpose to piss his daughters off because his daughters know that he's like a push over nice guy? So it's like yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That's 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 a testament, right? Like uh, that just tells me that Regina w did so well in that character. She made me hate her. So I was like. <laughs> Well, I she said, her as I love her as an actress because she was able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, she just said to you that uh, you hating me is the best compliment. So, <laughs> I mean, because that's the intention. That's what she's looking for in that character. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, I I'm a big Kira fan. I, I think that um, it's funny, the different interpretations of Kira. Like, I think a lot of people um, and then I'll answer your your other question. But now we're on the Kira train. Um, like, I think, I, I think a lot of people. <laughs> get it's just a polarizing character you know i think yeah. people like love to see um you know they're like excited about sky and all that stuff so like uh the opposition right and so yeah. they're like ah kira you know for me <laughs> i um i i'm excited because we're actually working on a sequel sky hoshi 2 uh and so there's going to be a lot more um a lot more kira and sky together in that film and i think you're gonna get to see a lot uh, more of like the rest of who care really is. So there's, cool. there's a lot of fun stuff going on. Um, but yeah, it's a fun character. Um, but to, to answer your question, mm -hmm. um, I think you asked I don't me, even remember what I, hold on, let me see. Uh, let me remember what I It was like, <laughs> what character am I most like? Justin or something? Oh yeah, I said, would you say you're more like Adam or Justin? <laughs> right, right, right. You know, if I had to pick, you know, one or the other, I would probably be slightly more of a, a slightly more of an Adam than a Justin, although it is a close tie. Um, but, uh, you know, I really put myself in all the characters and I think that's kind of like the fun thing about writing um, is that, especially this movie, I was able to to put a lot of me in, in the characters, you know? And so um, <laughs> Justin is just my, my drummer right. alter ego but um <laughs> but uh you know i think a lot of me is put into adam and a lot of me is put into sky you know like i i love how the movie you know the it's a it's a fun fantasy movie and stuff but really mm -hmm. the heart of it is about um you know finding like the mundane and the things that are in your life and finding an appreciation and a beauty in those things and kind of re-falling in love with the things that are already in front of you instead of taking them for granted. And so um, that's kind of like the, 
one of the main themes of the film. And so, you know, I, I love how Sky really brings that into the movie. And uh, I think we could all use a dose of that every now and then, you know, that's just awesome. to just to re-remember the the good that's already in your life. And, and you know. Well, yeah. I mean, that's and that's very similar to like when you have children and them experiencing things for the first time and yeah. seeing, and then it kind of gives you that kind of like, wow, I didn't realize popsicles were so good, but my son <laughs> says they're the best thing in, in his yeah, life. You know, exactly. Like, I should retry popsicles. You You're know, like, what I mean, oh, it's man. that kind of thing. So, so totally. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right, so that was amazing, and yeah, we're back on track. Me, <laughs> here we go. We're back. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. All right. laughs> I'm sorry again, ADHD brain. All right, uh. <laughs> but James asked in the thread. He does ask a lot of questions, so we will be pausing for that. <laughs> what is the most difficult and or unexpected part of making this project? So, like, what did you struggle with? What did you yeah. breeze through? Well. I had a lot of a lot of, a lot of stuff. This movie <laughs> was a labor of love and it was so much fun. But man, was there curveballs left and right making it? Um, I would say one of the biggest curveballs, which ended up being a giant blessing, was that we ended up losing our lead actor on day one of filming. And Ooh, so we no. were actually supposed, so I we had cast somebody to play the role of Adam. And um, and so that uh for whatever reason he ended up just like the, falling through on the morning of and so he, he was like hey guys i'm out i can't you know i can't uh, make it there and my schedule da, 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 da. so you know it just kind of fell through and we're mm. like well this is uh inconvenient <laughs> you know <laughs> and it just so happened that we were filming um at anime nyc so it's not like we can push the dates right yeah. so um our very first day of production was at anime nyc and so we filmed um you know, we filmed the movie uh, the first, I think, two days at Anime NYC. And so I had originally written all these scenes with Adam and Sky together, you know, at Anime NYC. And then you find out, oh, wait, hold on. We don't have yeah. Adam. <laughs> um, and so we, I ended up having to, like, do a rewrite overnight and be like, OK, so we don't have Adam. So what do we have and stuff? So I had to actually rewrite the script. And so now in the movie, Sky enters into the, you know, and she she goes in to see the convention all alone. And so right. it's kind of like an AB story where, you know, Adam goes and he, not too many spoilers, but you know, Adam goes and searches elsewhere and she goes to the convention. So she's by herself. Right. Um, and so, um, and because we got to film it like that, I had uh, my first choice to play Adam was actually Hunter Cole and he wasn't available during Anime NYC. So we ended up hiring somebody else. And so mm. kind of for this beautiful thing happened where I ended up changing the story. She goes in by herself and then like hindsight thinking of it, I'm like, oh, I think it's actually a stronger story with her experiencing it by herself for the first time. I think it's just a better movie. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then I was able to get uh, Hunter to play Adam in the movie because he came back from, he was on another project and he came back right after Anime NYC. And we're like, this is amazing. Okay. You're, you're now in this movie, you know? So like, it was uh, meant to be, it, it was meant to be. Yeah. So <laughs> it was definitely like a curveball, so many unexpected things. I mean, I had to do rewrites on the script and change stuff. Um, Chris Richards, who's in the chat, he was actually originally gonna, uh, play Marvin. <laughs> and Marvin was a different character, but and he was supposed to meet us at Anime NYC for those uh, scenes, and then everything fell apart, oh. and so I had to rewrite it all. <laughs> um, but ended up making a great film, and uh, and I can't even imagine the movie without Chris Richards being Mr. Mario, right? Yeah. And without uh, Adam or Hunter being Adam, and without Sky going by herself to the the convention for the first time. So all of these crazy things that kind of throw you curveballs and you're like, Oh my God, what's going on? Um, it makes a better movie. Uh, and, uh, it makes you really think on your feet and think outside the box creatively to be like, how mm -hmm. can I solve these problems? Um, and so I think you have a more unique story and you have something that, uh, you wouldn't have thought of, um, because what I did think of, <laughs> we would have done right? <laughs> right um so it's it's now it's something that i would have wouldn't have just thought of on my own and so when outside forces kind of force you to do stuff it makes a just a better movie and so it, it ended up being really cool and that's that's the thing i really really enjoy about indie filmmaking it's like a little bit of heartache and a little bit of like wild ride whirlwind where you're like whoa like what's going on something crazy just happened you know um but you end up creating a very unique story 
and you kind of catch lightning in a bottle. So, yeah. um, yeah. Do you like, I mean, so obviously when you're filming and things like that happen and you have to change things, is it hard for you to let go of the original? Like, is it hard for you to be like, Oh, but this is my baby and I want it to be like this. Or are you just like, Nope, slash it. Let's do it over. We need to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, as I'm becoming a more, like as I've directed more and more, I'm just getting much better about being a little less precious with things. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, I, you could you kind of experience heartbreak every day as a director because you're like, <laughs> yeah. this is what I want, you know, and then like like reality hits you and you're like, well, I can't shut down the street uh, <laughs> and I can't get the camera crane, you know. And so you're like, OK, well, how do I do this? Or um, or, you know, you you lose your actor on the morning of or whatever it might be. Um, so you every day you kind of show up and you're like, OK, I know I'm going to get thrown a curveball that I'm not expecting. Mm -hmm. um, and my job is to be able to think on my feet and create a better story because of that. And so like, it's a weird skill set that you need to have. Uh, and it's one that um, I actually really enjoy, weirdly enough. It's like this weird, like, what's going on? But you problem solve your way through it and you make something better. Um, and so I think at first, like my first feature, I was like just sad the whole time. <laughs> like, oh no, <laughs> this didn't work out. Oh yeah. man, now this, you know. But now um, I'm working on my fourth feature and uh, I'm like, yeah, this is how it goes, you know, <laughs> like this happens or that happens. But I've seen the other side of it and the other side is just a better movie. Um, and so when you kind of accept that and you learn that like, that's my job, I, I'm supposed to just be able to take these things, think on my feet and, and, you know, my job, I'm the keeper of the story, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm the storyteller. Um, and so as long as I can tell the story that I need to tell in the most compelling way, um, mm -hmm. I can tell it in many different ways. And so that's kind of the exciting part for me is like, whoa, what, what went wrong, quote unquote, right. today <laughs> that I can make a better movie at the end of it. Yeah, it just it, makes you think outside the box. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, it just means that you love chaos, and that's okay because I'm, I'm a so chaotic. chaos queen. Yeah, chaos. I say, yeah. <laughs> chaotic good. It's okay. Chaotic good. Just yes. means that I, you know, if to make you happy, I might kill the whole whole city <laughs> just to make you happy. That's what chaos uh, queen means. Oh no! Uh, do I sound like a super villain? No, oh, no. no, no. That was just like. <laughs> You know, that's no, it's, it's a paraphrase of a bar of a Buffy quote. Like, where, I was gonna say it's a character reveal for the sequel. Oh, it's there you go. the it's the uh, season three prom. Mm. And she said she's like, You're gonna have a prom, you're gonna have the best prom if I have to kill every single person in Sunnydale <laughs> to make it happen. And they're that's like hilarious. Okay. They're like, All right, <laughs> that took a turn, but yeah, I it was love the enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Uh, and she could. She was a slayer. So, you know, that's, you that's her thing. Um, probably dating myself a little there, but, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so I really liked Sky Hoshi. I just thought that it was so cute. And there are a lot of different things that I thought about. And maybe it's just because I'm Barbie obsessed. I really am Barbie obsessed. I'm Love Barbie it. obsessed. Um, but that... Uh, I felt like there was like when you separated them and what made it feel like, like more uh, powerful for me was that she kind of had her Barbie moment. She yeah. had that moment of realizing I'm not who I was written as or who I was perceived as and conceived of. I'm somebody else now. And so right. she had that moment of I'm a real person. And like, and so I thought that was great. I thought, that like realization on her and how you just kind of kept it on her during that yeah. was amazing. So I, yeah, I'm totally on board with that. And I'm oh, so glad you. you're not like being so precious with your stuff and that you can do stuff on the fly. So, yeah. Yeah. So I did want to say you. that cause I really like, it stood out to me. I was like, this is her, this is her moment. This is her becoming aware that yeah. it, she's not who she thought she was. She's somebody different because right. of the experiences she's having. And so yeah. I thought it was amazing. So oh, thank job. you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Olivia who like brought sky to life in such an amazing way. You know, that, that scene, I think is one of my favorite scenes in the movie movie where she's, you know, she's hearing all these facts about her, yeah. which aren't correct anymore, you know, yeah. because she 
gets to write her own future. And I think um, that's just like a, such a powerful moment of the movie. And I think that's that's one of the, like those moments where um, I feel like somebody could actually be inspired by or, or get something from, you know, like, oh, like I can I can choose who, who I want to be. And, you know, I, I can I can write my own future, you know. And so I think that was a very powerful moment for for Sky in that. It could also be like people growing up because like when mm. you're a kid, basically you're what your parents think you are, basically. Mm. I mean, if you have great parents, they let you be whatever you want to be. But you're really you see yourself through their their eyes. And mm -hmm. then when as you get older, you, you start seeing yourself through your eyes. And so I, I saw that, too, like of a, you know, maybe a child getting older and growing up and learning that they can do things themselves. And so mm. I thought that was neat too. So yeah. it was a really nice, like little, you know, see through, uh, pass through type thing that yeah. actually had a lot of emotion to it. And I think it really helped earn the end, which mm. I won't give away, but <laughs> I, I do think it helped earn the end of the, of the movie, but okay. Nice. So oh, I'm happy you loved it. That's great. Yeah, it was, I thought it was great. Oh. And you know what? You give a pink gun, pink hair. I'm all about it. I'm just telling Here, yep. you. Here Barbie for obsessed. I loved Jim. <laughs> I'm all on the pink train. Okay. Love it. <laughs> and that sounded really, that phrasing was not good. I apologize. <laughs> phrasing. <laughs> phrasing. Yeah. I almost wore my Archer shirt too. So that was <laughs> uh, So the, so you said, so you do, you've done visual effects. And I have to say the star at like at the end the star oh yeah i loved that i was like how are they gonna do that because you know you showed the merging and like the the stars yeah. fading and stuff right. and then there's that the end where the star and I'm, that's all i'm gonna be as vague as possible <laughs> but you know what i'm talking about yeah, yeah um i loved that and i loved the color and like it was almost like a like a kiss it yeah. was like that kind of like Mwah! Like how you would yeah. do, like how you would see a kiss in color, yeah. I think. And so I thought that was neat. And it was such a juxtaposition for the moment that it was in mm. that it like almost made me feel better. Like I was like, oh, oh no, everything's going to work out. Like, you know, right. that kind of thing. So I, I loved that. But yeah, that was that was pretty visually affecting, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So how did you how did you construct that? I mean, did was that all on computer? Was any of it live yeah, well, or real? Yeah. So I did a lot of combination of practical effects and then you know visual effects in in mm -hmm. um, After Effects. And so um, the star moment specifically, the way I made all the stars work is um, my wife Stephanie actually folded all the little paper stars. She's one of the few people that can do it. All of us on set, we had to do a lot of stars in this movie, yeah. the paper stars. I cannot fold a paper star to save my life. Um, <laughs> I would be in trouble if I had to. Um, and so it's funny, like we all had to like fold stars at one point and um, mine weren't looking so good. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I was like, I'm gonna go back to uh, setting up the camera while <laughs> other people uh, keep folding stars. Um, so Stephanie folded all the pretty stars that we had. Um, and all the rejects ended up being the ones, uh, you know, <laughs> elsewhere. But um, so we had actual, you know, um, like shimmery star paper. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I ended up just practically just uh, shooting light at, at the bottle with the stars. And then um, in After Effects, I was able to do some really cool, like light warping techniques. Mm -hmm. And so kind of between the two techniques, I was able to get some like really cool um, effects. And then I was also... Uh, I, I filmed a plate, we call it, which is basically just a background with nothing on it. So mm -hmm. I took um, I took the bottle and the star out uh, and it's just the shot with nothing. And so I was able to kind of compose those shots together. So we get the, sh the star fading, essentially, with some cool light effects. Oh, that's um, neat. Yeah. So it was a lot of trial and error because it's like it's it's how do I make a star vanish? OK, that's like mm -hmm. technique number one. And then right. technique number two, two is kind of the arty part where you're like, and how cool and and weird do I want this to look, you know? <laughs> right. And so um, you kind of like mess with it until you just you're like, OK, yeah, that's Sky Hoshi, you know? So, um, right. so I did a lot of variations of like how the star fades and dies. And uh, and that was the the technique I ended up on. But I'm glad you liked it because that was the yeah. one I, that I ended up going with. <laughs> I, I really like I because I liked I loved I liked the through line of the stars. Mm -hmm. So how it started at the beginning and then 
the story and like the background. I love that. I thought that was so cool. Like that oh. story and how she told it. Yeah. And then at the end, I thought like, I, I really felt like, the stars had their own emotional arc almost like you yes. know i mean they didn't but you know what i mean like they had their own arc it was right. like what's gonna happen and you had a ticking clock without mm. it being a clock you right. had a time frame that you had to do stuff in and so it really gave a sense of urgency but it did it in such a fun and anime way like yeah. in in something that it's totally anime anime wouldn't go okay we have an hour you know like it right, would be, right. you know it'd be like app you know so many purple sunset you know that's yeah <laughs> that's totally. an anime thing. so it was really it was nice and it was uh it was a nice like little um i'm gonna say a moose bouche because i just mm. love saying a moose bouche but i like an amuse bouche of anime <laughs> yes. in, in the movie so that you got that feel and you had that through line mm. and it was always in the back of your mind oh gosh okay how many stars are left how long have they been together right. what's going on you know right. like that. and um and then uh, Phil and I were talking about the ramen scene when he's teaching her to make ramen. Yeah. That how that was very cute. And it, it like reminded us, us of like Scott Pilgrim versus the world kind of thing. And yes. we were like, oh, so cute. You know, That's so great. we like uh, a, a lot of the a, a lot of the scenes just gave me so many uh, uh, Edgar Wright vibes. Mm. Uh, I, like like the opening scene in the movie is very Scott Pilgrim, like just, mm -hmm. just doing yeah. the band and everything. But then the uh like almost the dramatic cuts when he's doing the uh uh when he's making the ramen so like you know they're doing like the the, the you're doing the pull away but with the uh with the action shot oh yeah, yeah in the bag and then pouring the water and it's very much like a like a scott pilgrim scene I'm like oh there's so much edgar wright in this <laughs> nice yeah yeah I don't yeah know. I've, I've heard a lot of people mention scott pilgrim um and I totally like I totally get it. Like I I'm, I've, I love that movie. I've seen it um, so many times now. It's such a good film. Um, but yeah, it's it's funny. I never really had Edgar Wright or Scott Pilgrim in my mind when I was making it. I, I was actually thinking of like E.T. <laughs> I, was, I, see, I had I could see that, too. When you yeah. said Spielberg and you were talking about E.T., I, I was like, yeah, like a fish out of water type thing. Like yeah, it's yeah. that story of. Oh my gosh, what is this? It was like Wonder Woman in the first one when she was like ice cream. Like, you know, yeah, I, mean? I yeah, think yeah. it's that kind of moment. So I, <laughs> totally. I, yeah, I totally felt that. But I feel, I think it's funny because, yeah, a lot of people have mentioned Scott Pilgrim, which I totally get. Like, I totally see that, you know? Um, but I, I had uh, I had E.T. on the mind while, I'm, while I was making it. Yeah. <laughs> you had E.T. on the mind, but that anime, I think, just pushed it right to Scott. Yeah. <laughs> right, to, right, to, right to Scott Pilgrim with the anime. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hey, rightfully I, so. I feel like it's a compliment because oh, that I'll, was a pretty kick ass movie. Oh, so, like... it. Such a good film. Yeah. Uh, and you did the twist like the the badass was the girl, really. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, so. Um, so you did, so with the star you did that so did how did the how did the actual like lasery part of the laser gun start like how did it, how did you compose that versus that star was it like a similar process or was it yeah the laser gun was a lot of fun because it was all like the laser itself was all um computer generated that mm -hmm. i did in after effects um but the fun part was everything that she shot um was all practical so um you know when she shoots the the buzzer on the wall yeah mm -hmm. and there's like a hole in the buzzer so what we did is a little bit of a camera trick so we had two buzzers um and uh it's just like literally like taped to the wall um <laughs> so the first one is just regular and the second one we like burned a hole in and made it look all like messed up and so we you know start the shot on the regular buzzer and she shoots the laser and we whip pan over to her. And then while we're staring at Sky, somebody, uh, uh, our prop master, she grabbed the, uh, <laughs> she grabbed it and she did the old switcheroo. So she took the, the clean one off and put the messed up one on the wall. And then I pan back to it and it's all messed up. And so like the, the combination of the visual effect of the, the laser blasting, you know, and all the cool stuff. And then the, the actual physical item being all screwed up um, was a really like cool way to tie it into the world and um and make it really believable so um yeah so i did a lot of that same thing with the um when she shoots the uh the alarm clock we had oh, yeah. we had two alarm clocks uh <laughs> one with a hole in it one regular <laughs> and i'm just like i'm like and zap and then somebody <laughs> yanks the alarm clock off the thing and then uh you know i'm 
put in lasers later. And so, yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, it, it's, it was really amazing on screen. So then when you like take it apart, you're like, Oh, well. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, the behind the scenes is really magic. funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I totally get that. So, that, so that's, that's awesome. usually most behind the scenes stuff is like, yeah. so yeah, it was this, this, and this, and this, and it was really fun to shoot. Yeah, those are like the fun moments when you're shooting that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, I love the movie. We painted magic this guy all. green and just attached balls to him, and then yeah, exactly. ran him through the scene, and that's how we got it. You know, it's like, and you're yeah. like, oh, is he okay? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what's so funny is that I'm, um, you know, I I've done, um, you know, we we did the lasers, you know, and we did like the the star effects and you know um, other type of effects in the in the film, and those were uh funny enough very easy in compared to the most simple thing that nobody will ever notice and that's the sky hoshi poster on the wall in the comic store that was actually um green screened so really? the 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 poster on the wall was just a green card that i put on the wall because when we filmed we didn't have the anime artwork done yet and so we filmed and they're reacting to just uh, like a green blank poster on the wall and um and so then uh, later on, like a month or so later, we our anime artists end, ended up creating Sky. Um, mm -hmm. We're like, yeah, that's awesome. And so then I had to um, do the visual effects, actually put a real poster on that the wall. And so it sounds simple, um, wow. but just for whatever reason, just motion tracking and the shadows and taking, you know, taking like the green off the wall and rotoscope, just like all the techniques that I, all, <laughs> every tool in my toolkit, you know, just to get the poster looking like a regular poster. And it just, it's wow. just hilarious to me. I'm like, next time I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna print something. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Maybe I'll well, just push the whole shoot by a month and wait <laughs> till it's done. And I'm gonna print something. And, and was, was the, uh, the, the animation or not the animation, but like the drawn version, was it based on Olivia? It was, yeah. Yeah, so um, awesome. we actually did a photo shoot with Olivia dressed as Sky, and we, you know, her different like poses. I, I chose the one for the poster, um, and I chose the one for the actual uh, the poster in the movie, and then the poster for the uh, actual movie poster. Mm -hmm. um, and so we sent it over to our anime artist, and we're like, "Here's Sky," and they're like, "All right, cool." And so they ended up drawing an anime version of Olivia, and so um, that's kind of something that I find pretty cool is that like in the world of Sky Hoshi, like the anime character and Olivia as Sky look so similar because it's based off of her. And so, um, you know, my if we were to ever do like an actual anime, maybe one day we'll see. Um, <laughs> like you, you, you read our script because I was. Yes. Yeah, that was like going to be the next question. Was, yeah. OK, so when are we getting the anime? <laughs> yeah. So if we were to ever do one, you know, um, Olivia would have to voice the character, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's like kind of an exciting thought is that, um, you know, normally when you do a, a live adaptation, um, you have to find somebody that looks close enough to the, mm -hmm. the character and somebody who might sound close enough to the character. But it's like, we kind of reverse engineered it. And it's like, yeah. the character is actually based off of somebody who already exists. So it kind of, it, it worked. <laughs> and and she's going to be in a very small but elite list if it does happen, because I think uh, Haley Atwell, she started out as Peggy Carter in live action, then went to Captain Carter in oh. animation and then went back. As Captain <laughs> Carter. So I, it's a it's a pretty short list. You don't yeah. very, you very rarely get somebody live action and then like and it's unique for her and for you guys as well, because there's like you're not doing already established ip so like you could totally establish the ip with this and so that's right. amazing i think that's that's amazing and i can't wait to get the shirts and i'll and like keychains and little, little yes. marshmallows and then... yes. <laughs> we got we got some of those we got keychains <laughs> we got mugs yeah i got a i got a hoodie <laughs> there you go there yeah you go. uh so Jay, I, I forgot a question that James asked. He was talking about marketing mm. uh, and what goes into marketing a film like this. And then he's got another techie question. So sweet. I'll, I'll answer both. Um, marketing a film that this one was very like just word of mouth type stuff. I mean, we we um, we've been doing a lot of podcasting to talk mm -hmm. about the film. Um, we've been doing a lot of um, just kind of we went to comic stores like local comic stores here in new york mm -hmm. city 
and uh, you know, give um, basically like doing screenings here and like you know, telling people about the movie. And then um, one, I think the most effective thing, or like I think the, the one of the bigger things that we did is we went to a bunch of fan expos, and so um, we actually were able to screen the movie at a bunch of fan expos and anime conventions. And so that's when we went on tour. Um, we, you know, we had you know really big theaters, and uh, we had a lot of people kind of show up, and it was nuts. The um, you know, we we went to Chicago, and uh, it was like, um, you know, Christopher Lloyd was right there. You know, I was like, <laughs> I can see him. Oh, I'm in the same room as Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> My mind was blown. Me and me and Regina were freaking out. She's a big <laughs> of nature fan as well. Um, and then uh, you know, uh, when we did the San Francisco one, Mark Hamill was there. And oh so we, my, um, my room was literally right next to Mark Hamill's room. And so we screened Sky Hoshi Anime Girl. And we did a big old panel um, and it was really fun. And um, and then I had a, we always do a and a and then like an autograph signing of posters and stuff. And so um, I had, I had a line of people and my line was like, really short compared to Mark <laughs> Hamill's line, but my line was next to Mark Hamill's line. <laughs> so you did an anime expo then? What's that? You did it at Anime Expo in San Francisco? Uh, uh, Fan Expo. Yeah. Fan, um, Say Wong in the chat was there. Oh, no way. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, awesome. There. Yeah. So, you know, I was right next to Mark Hamill's room if you were there. That um, is so awesome. That You've was been a lot closer of closer to Mark Hamill than I have. I'm totally <laughs> jelly. Uh, I think <laughs> he might have heard the movie. I turned it up really loud. You know, and we were in the next room. He probably heard it. Mark Hamill heard my movie. Did. I'm surprised he didn't come in and go, hey, you kids. Hey, turn that racket down. Yeah. He heard the rare candies. He heard us play music. Oh, oh there God. you go. Yeah. I'm He's sure probably he seen like, Tom, uh, what is it? Tamahochi? Tamahochi? Yeah, yeah. Oh my Tamagotchi? I'm, I'm sure at, well, at one point the, the, the music was playing and he was like, uh, you know, I really want to know who, who this band is. He's like, <laughs> yeah. ah. I think I have a new favorite band. What is this? Rare, right. rare something? Yeah. Rare candy? Rare candles? Yeah, is rare candles. Rare candles? <laughs> what is that? Uh, yeah. So nope. James said, more techie questions. What types of camera do you use? So and I, yeah. Editing software, all that kind of stuff. All that, just all that jazz. That. All that jazz. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we shoot on red, red cameras. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the one we shoot on is the red uh, Epic W. And so it shoots an 8K, which is crazy. Uh, oh, eight cray, um, and so <laughs> eight cray, I like it. Eight cray, yeah, overkill. Um, but it has a, an amazing uh, sensor. It's a great camera, and we actually um, we filmed it uh, on a ingenue anamorphic lens, and that was very cool because um, somebody who had this is a long story. I'll make it very short. But basically, a guy that I had seen my work before. Um, he actually is a part of like the Ingenue lens company. And so we reached out to Ingenue and we're like, Hey, we're doing this movie. I think it would look great on anamorphic, you know, mm -hmm. um, which is if for people who don't know, anamorphic is basically just like, um, like a more traditional, like sci-fi type of lens. Um, and so, uh, it, anyways, so they were like, Oh, actually I've, I've seen Kalani's work. Yeah. We'll, we'll let you borrow a lens for a little bit. And I was like, what? This is crazy. Oh, that's so awesome. like awesome moment. So they sent us this crazy expensive lens that we were able to use Uh shout out on Janu. Love that. And mm -hmm. we filmed it all on anamorphic and the lens that we used is the same one that they used um, on the um, Star Trek movies. And no so way. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. So uh, Sky Hoshi has got a little touch of Star Trek in it. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was really, really cool to have that. And so uh, you'll notice like the movie has a lot of beautiful lens flares. That is why. <laughs> I, I, the, I noticed the lens yeah. flares a lot. Yes. Yeah. That is the I ingenue. noticed the rainbow lens flares. Yes. The rainbow lens flares. I'm like, this is so sick. It's yeah. So beautiful. So yeah, um, it was awesome to shoot on a lens like that epic. Uh, it wasn't as bad as like a bad robot lens flare, but it was <laughs> lens flare though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, it was really cool to have that. Um, and then editing, we, we do all Adobe. So I edit in Premiere. We do a visual effects in Premiere. All that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Or so visual effects and after effects. My bad. What was it like starting in filmmaking and where film is now? So like when you started, where you are now, I think we kind of talked about that a little uh, earlier, but like if you want to expand on in the event. Yeah, I mean, oh my God, it's so like, life is so much easier now with an iPhone. Like, my, <laughs> like this is great. If I would, <laughs> Sky Hoshi, um, I, uh, you know, I would, when I was a kid, you know, I was lucky if I was able to get my hands on a camera. And then when I finally did, uh, my parents had an old like cassette tape 
camera like a high aid yeah exactly yeah. and so i would film with that and then you know in order to edit i would have to hit play into the vcr and then like hit record and if i wanted music then i would have to like do like my headphones into the vcr for audio yeah. and then like feed the video it was sketchy so oh, yeah. you know i started there um and then as obviously technology is just like this is amazing now i have mm -hmm. you know now i have the ability to do visual effects in after effects mm -hmm. um and all that good stuff with like amazing 8k cameras and all this stuff um and it's like the the quality and the the ability of what i have now is like some some of it's better than what they had when they were making some of my favorite movies you know which is kind of right. nuts yeah. like i i watched um you know i watched uh what was it i think it was back to the future the, the other day i'm always watching back to the future <laughs> over and over again but like I, I was just looking at some of these effects and i'm like as you do i was like i could like i could recreate that like with after effects right now this is crazy you know it's just crazy how we have that technology in our hands now that like ilm you know didn't even have back then you know so it's right. it's really cool i absolutely love how a technology has changed and made it so people who you know have less resources than a big studio uh, can just have a laptop and an iPhone and make something cool, you know? So I, I, I just think it's so cool and I I'm all for technology, keeping, keeping it going, making life easier. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's really cool. Like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be on anything <laughs> if we didn't have eye products, yes. iPhone, iPad, whatever. I'm yeah. on an iPad right now. Exactly. So it's like, uh, but yeah, so I think that's great. And then uh, he said, "How ha he, you already answered that? Never mind." Okay, James. And then he says he wants you to bring it back to California. Sewang did say he was there. Let's see. Let's catch up. How does uh, the how does he command a line this song? <laughs> I that was for Mark Hamill. Oh uh, yeah, like, I'm what? sure. <laughs> yeah. Sewang, what are you talking about? Uh, All Regina. Right. Okay, me and Regina and Stephanie just watched this movie, The Kingsman. Uh, Secret oh, Service. Yes. That um, is a good. I love that. Movie. I had never seen it. Talking I about Edgar White, right? Like talking about yeah. Edgar White. <laughs> yeah, and so like I, I had never heard of this movie. I've never seen it. So Regina showed it to us the other day, and um, and it was fantastic. It was really good. It was, mm -hmm. it was great. Um, it was such a fun movie. And but for whatever reason, they went hard on those titles. Like <laughs> in really the beginning, did. like like a whole like explosion like throws mm -hmm. rocks off a wall and then like the title happens and i'm like oh okay <laughs> i like, think that's what happens when you give an indie filmmaker like edgar right a, a huge budget and he's like i don't know what to spend this on uh let's explode something yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, it's let's like, go I've crazy on these titles i mean <laughs> like the bit the biggest example of what you do when you give an indie uh creator a, cra a shit ton of money yeah. It's Pilgrim versus the world. It's like yeah, that it's exactly yeah. It's that movie is still a indie film, but with like a massive budget. Yeah, <laughs> it is. There you go. And that's I felt like so I felt like the quality of your film was was on that tier though. Like oh, it man, felt that's amazing. <laughs> it didn't. I knew it was an indie film because Phil told me and uh, <laughs> and but then when I was watching I was like man these panning shots and the way the like the shot was actually you know composed and how you how you framed everything so it 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 was like high quality I knew you had done some commercial work just by how you framed the the scene itself and like when you the cuts back and forth and how it was edited i was like yeah this guy knows what he's doing i like this you know and <laughs> nice, the, the pink that. was totally up my alley i yes. love it you know i can't say that enough <laughs> uh so yeah but yeah i really honestly i think that 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 it's good and i honestly believe like these kind of stories especially and like barbie hits so big that mm. this is one of those that it's that same type of genre where it's it's just a person trying to figure out who the heck they are yeah. and it really is the basic and just putting all of the fun anime stuff into it i thought it was great i mean it, it was something that i hadn't ever seen before you know yeah. and that was kind of like it, ha it was reminiscent of other projects but it was its own thing as well and it's hard to balance that i thought you did a good job Oh, wait. Thank you so much. I <laughs> yes. love that. That's amazing. I try to love give to hear it. like actual opinion and not just be like, yeah, it was good because that was doesn't good. help yeah. anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so. No, I love to hear it. You know, it's it's always amazing to hear like what people got from it or like, mm -hmm. you know, what their experience was. And so, yeah, thank you.
appreciate I, it. I, I like that. And I didn't know if we were supposed to know who the creator was or not, but I did mm. like how you uh, kind of did him as almost like a, not like a, not like, not like an, an like a authoritarian person, but it had that like he was so tall, which yeah. is also an anime staple. Like you have totally. these characters that are talking and they're very like militaristic and stuff, and but they're huge and all, you feel like they're like seventy five stories tall and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, you did that and with the the uh, color and the film behind him, like where you were projecting stuff behind him. Yeah, it looked really good. It made him seem almost otherworldly, almost creator like, like the creator right. of all things. And so I liked that too, and how you did it with just lighting mm. and um, and him just being the the per telling the story and then you would have like uh stuff behind him that you couldn't really see but it just made him look more like authoritarian and i just right. liked that i thought that was cool while she's in this like inner part of herself and he's just way out there so it was yeah. a nice juxtaposition so totally that no that's cool i'm glad you got that um <laughs> yeah i really wanted to like show him in like like you're saying kind of like that big creator you know like because he's mm -hmm. he created sky hoshi you know and so she's seeing her creator for the first time but also it, the scene is not about who he is it's about how sky feels mm -hmm. and so and and her inner um you know like everything that she's going on inside of her at that time and so i was like i i'm gonna focus on Sky's like emotional reactions to everything and less on who who is this guy and like showing, you know, all this stuff. And so I thought that was a really um, anime way to serve that. <laughs> yeah, but I also like that you, it wasn't just, I'm gonna do anime version. It was, I, they're humans. Mm -hmm. And we have one character that was anime, but she's learning to be human. And so right. it was much more the human side of it and right. just kind of like her trying to figure out how to be human. And I liked that. I liked that a lot. I also liked with Kira, I liked that she was, no, I don't want you. Oh, but somebody else wants you. And I don't want you to have that either. And I right. love that. I Because it, it's I so... I think hate her because she, she, she played like the jealousy factor but at the same time like there's a lot of like deep down feelings and that's mm -hmm. also why i like her right like i right. I, I keep saying that i hate her but I, I really did like the character i thought she was really <laughs> well written um but i mean like you know I, I think a lot of it is she's also repressing a lot of her feelings and that's yeah. what's actually on her mind and her natural reactions to things is to make it seem like she doesn't care because it's a defense mechanism Right. Yeah. And that's that's what I love about the Kira's character so much is that she is a very, very complex character. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, on the surface, she just might seem grumpy. But when you really think about, like, you know, her logic behind everything and like her actions, it's, you know, I like to think that like Kira cares mm -hmm. almost too much, you know, like she really like cares about her friends. Um, and so she's actually like kind of worried about Adam at this point because mm -hmm. you know, like who's a strange person in your house? You know, like now you're acting strange. Like um, Kira, I mean, Adam was a very predictable guy until um, <laughs> Kira is layered like an onion. Nice. <laughs> uh, you know, Kira, uh, Adam is a very predictable person who who was always like, you know, doing the same thing every single day. He's kind of stuck in his rut and Sky, you know, turns his life upside down. And so. Mm -hmm that's good for adam but from kira's point of view she's like uh what's going on adam's not acting anywhere near the way he normally is and so you know she's almost like worried for him and in her own kira way and her her motives are correct but the way she acts is a little misguided <laughs> you know so um right. or like you know bassists are like onions yes exactly <laughs> instead of ogres right bassists or like onion. <laughs> or like onions. Yeah. So I, I think, um, you know, uh, you, you'll find out in the sequel. This isn't a spoiler. This is just kind of like <laughs> a fun thing. But um, the origin story between Kira and Justin is one of my favorite origin stories. <laughs> because Justin was being bullied in the cafeteria in, in, uh, in school when they were young. And Kira stood up for Justin and fought off the bullies. And ever since then, uh, Justin's been following Kira around um and they've been good friends <laughs> and so you know kira is a very caring person and you get to find that out more we're, we're working on a sequel right now and uh in the sequel you get to hear a little bit more about her backstory and that that makes its way in there but i love the little kira justin like friendship <laughs> 
Yeah, the pizza scene was hilarious. I was like, yeah. <laughs> it was like, I draw my pizza. Oh, I yeah. felt like that was kind of like, uh, what's the kid on The Simpsons that's like, I'm in danger? Was that Ralph? Oh, yeah, Ralph. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, I felt like Justin was kind of like Ralph. I to totally like, see that. Yeah. To like Kira's Lisa. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. gosh. You know, I was like, <laughs> I can't get rid so of much him, sense. You know, kinda... <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was nice, but I did like it and I thought it was. I thought it was cool. I, yeah, I just, I liked Kira as the antagonist. Yeah. I mean, she's not a bad person. She just, she's just you know, she's got her own for... thing going on. And, yeah. <laughs> I All hope right. she's missing from my shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually, um, so, so kind of just going back, like, if, if, if it got to the point where you guys made an anime, mm -hmm. like, like, even if it was just like the first season, just to kind of get like more context to the world that, uh, that sky is coming from and that kira is now in right that mm -hmm. kind of thing like do you have an idea or a plan because it seems like you guys almost have an, a bible for the anime yeah There's a lot of references to the anime and it's an anime that doesn't exist it's not something that i can go and like oh i'm gonna go to crunchyroll and go watch this right now like you right know, um, you know it's it's it but but it very much seems like there is structure and story and there are things there that everyone references and everybody in the world knows about mm -hmm. so, like Again, it seems like you guys have a Bible written for the anime. Right. Like, would you, like, do you have like a plan for like a, a hypothetical first season? Oh my gosh. I would love to make a first season. Um, I have an entire way too long <laughs> outline written for um, the whole Sky Hoshi series, Future Punk 3001. And so what I did is I didn't want to make a movie that didn't have any like, like, something to stand on so i was like if i'm gonna make a, a movie about sky hoshi i have to make a real character with a real anime um with real rules so when people are mentioning this and when we're talking about it in the movie it all actually makes sense and it actually has something to point to and so before i wrote sky hoshi the movie i actually went and i sat and i wrote what sky hoshi future punk 3001 was and so and then i went and made sky hoshi anime girl which references Future Punk 3001. And so um, I'm actually currently working on a manga right now. Uh, and so um, at some point we'll be releasing the, the official issue number one of Sky Hoshi Manga, um, which essentially is going to be um, the anime story. And um, it, it is pretty cool because it, it does kind of, it's like explains everything you've heard about in the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like, you actually get to read it now, which is cool. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. So, so um, we'll get the star story. You'll get the star story. Oh, that is so awesome. Yeah. If you guys make any art for that, like with the star story, I would love it. And if you can make it in the style of Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, that would be freaking fantastic. Oh, I need a, <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to need the link to the Kickstarter when that <laughs> Right? Exactly. Yes. You'll have to come back on when you're promoting the Kickstarter and, we'll, yes. and have like, a, we can get like the whole gang on if you want. <laughs> like oh, we'll just that would be amazing. Yeah. That would be amazing. Uh, yeah. So we're currently working on a manga, like, uh, and I'm very excited about it. Um, and it, yeah, the, like we have the whole outline for where it goes from, you know, Sky Hoshi um, joins the agency and then um, all the way through the syndicate and how she gets her gun and, and all that good stuff. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about it all. It's a very big story and, um, I definitely have enough for multiple seasons, but well, you know, I, um, now I just have to figure out how to, uh, get the funding for an anime. That's, right, that's the go. biggest. Yeah. Cause I would like, you know, if expensive. you want to get on the phone, get on the phone with Netflix first. Cause apparently yeah, yeah. they'll just throw money at you. <laughs> yeah. I gotta, I gotta go find, uh, some, find a phone number somewhere. There you go. Right? Sky, yeah. Sky, Sky Hoshi in, in. The movie because this is not really a spoiler like you were up to like six seasons by by, by, by the point where she was at right uh yeah I mentioned that it was like the sixth and final season yes that's correct yeah so it's like that that's that's kind of where it has to go is like you know if this kind of blows up it's like okay well uh i have to write six seasons out and it has to end <laughs> on the sixth season yeah it's gotta end yeah exactly so, so it's so funny we oh, oh was go that ahead. no go ahead you oh talk. um it's so funny we <laughs> have a words. We have a Discord, and I was just talking to everybody in the Discord today about like the Sky Hoshi manga, um, and like 
you know, kind of letting everybody vote on where, which was the first issue that's going to come out because it is such a big story. Um, and like you're saying, six seasons. So I'm like, the story's really big, everybody. We're going to start with number one. Where in the <laughs> timeline do you want me to, do you want the first release to be, you know? So that it was kind of a fun combo to have with everybody in our, our Pure Magic Discord today. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. So, yeah. so J James is saying Toei Studios would be interested. <laughs> Phil, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Toei, uh, Toei Studios is, uh, I mean, that, that that's where Kira Toriyama was for like the longest time. Oh, I, okay. All right. Studios, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they, they put out a crap ton of uh, anime. Mm. So what's that's like the Rolls Royce of anime? I'll Is see that... what I can do. Right? Uh, no. <laughs> Let me just go find their uh, their email real quick. <laughs> right? and... yeah, I know a guy. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I we, we do know a guy who uh, who his dream is to. He's a voice actor and he's actually like voice acting now. But his dream is to do anime. So uh, we we've got a guy. All right, with our powers so, combined. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, like Wonder Twin powers activate. Yeah, uh, so, he'd and, be a supporting character because he right. kind of can't play Sky Hoshi. But uh, hey, he probably we, we got the syndicate. I was gonna say we got a syndicate leader. He could probably probably play the syndicate leader. I, we that's a very big role. We need it. I I I would come on and say things like Sky Hoshi go and things like that <laughs> if you wanted. But I think perfect. That's about <laughs> we we need I, all of it. I would totally so. want to play a syndicate leader too, uh, or like a syndicate character. Maybe not, not even a leader. Like I don't even want to be a leader character. What I want to be is a season antagonist, right? Ooh. So you have you have the leader, right? Mm -hmm. But then I would want to be like the big bad of that season. Okay. Okay. Right? Because I mean, if you watch anime, you know. So like, you would be Sam. You would be Sam. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the syndicate members. Okay. Um. He he went rogue. Oh, okay, so, you oh know. a Ronin syndicate member. So I'm just saying, you could be Sam. There you go. Um, <laughs> that's. <laughs> so Say Wong said, uh, "When can we expect a sequel?" I mean, we actually—that's one of our questions. So let's let's get Sweet. into it. Yeah. So um, Sky Hoshi Anime Girl, the very first movie, is out and watchable currently very and watchable very watchable very watchable movie <laughs> so you can watch the movie right now if you'd like at puremagicpictures.com shameless plug um <laughs> but um the sequel we're actually working on um right now so we just did like a little bit of a table read for it um like a, a very early stage table read um and so um we are kind of getting our ducks in a row and getting ready for production um and we're gonna start filming sometime this year so hopefully sometime in the next few months we'll be in production for sky hoshi 2 which takes place um pretty much picking up where the first movie leaves off so like one year later um and so uh we kind of just continue the story and um there's a lot of more action in this one um which is very exciting there's a lot more action and a lot more like sky hoshi anime lore that you get to learn about That's um awesome. and uh yeah so I'm very excited about that. But this year we'll be starting production. I was, oh, was going to say, are we are, are we going to get a stunt team on this on this one? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, we we'll were talking see. about action. We were like, do you think there's going to be action? <laughs> so oh, yeah, there, like, there just, will be action. You know, um, Regina, I want to see more like like I want to see fight scenes in, in, in this. Oh, we got fight scenes in this one. Yeah, we got a lot of fight scenes. Yeah, because it's like I I there, there's so much reference to how badass she is. Mm -hmm. like, I want to see her like kicking people's asses. You know, and, and <laughs> yes. And, that's that's kind of in my mind where I was like, you know, uh, like in my mind. And again, feel free to steal steal any ideas I'm putting out here right now, right? Because, <laughs> but like my idea was, okay, find. And again, if I'm on the money, do not say anything because I don't want spoilers to go. Out there. <laughs> okay, okay. No, no reaction. I'll say nothing. Ever. This yeah. is <laughs> no, because this this has happened before. Where we had a filmmaker on here. I suggested something, and then off mic, he was like, "So." did you read my script and then, the second, <laughs> and then the second movie came out and it was like shit i did predict a lot of that you like i predicted it yeah, yeah. <laughs> um great. and that was just all prediction so uh but basically my idea would would be like okay so the wish is what brought her to our world mm -hmm. right uh there was a at the end uh, uh there's a mention of the third setting on the gun yeah right uh mm -hmm. so the third setting <laughs> right so, so the whole thing is like okay so what if the third setting 
uh, had to do with, especially because it's a world that's very cyberpunk, but also has magic attached to it and things like mm -hmm. that. So what if the third setting was something that was supposed to be like, I don't know, like a portal gun or, or a dimensional, uh, like, like some kind of dimensional portal kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they're dealing with. Right. So it's just kind of like that's there and she turns it on by accident. That's also explaining how Kira ended up in their world. But uh, <laughs> again, do not give away. And like, do, <laughs> this is I will say crazy. that I, I love it. Um, <laughs> there is there is a reveal of what the third setting is uh -huh. uh, in the sequel. So um, the third setting definitely is a plot point. Yeah. Sequel, yeah. So. But like where I'm going on this is so she pops open the portal. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is how we get Kira and uh, um, and Sky back. It's, uh, Kira runs through and she's running from something and she's fucking terrified. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and the thing is that by this point, she's a badass, but she's scared of what's what's happening right now. And she's like kind of running from the enemy kind of thing. So she mm -hmm. runs to the portal uh, and she tells, you know, Sky, get out of the way. Run. Right. Slow walk out of the portal is is a villain like you know the villain and just looks around and is like you know basically comments on the world that he's in and sky recognizes who it is too and yes basically the idea is you know now you have a clear-cut anime antagonist walking in their world and that's where you get these fight scenes and everything so hey i mean you gave me permission to use it, so one hundred percent. You see this happen in the sequel, you'll know what happened. I, I I do not mind it because when I go to watch it, it's like, yeah, I'm not getting credit for it, but at the same time, yeah. I, I, I I know it's my idea. So. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So and I also, of course, had had an idea. I didn't know you guys were making a sequel, and I was yeah. like, it would be really cool if the sequel was anime, and actually, Kira pulled everyone into the actual sky hoshi world <laughs> i was sick. like that would be so cool That'd so if you sick. decide to do an else worlds you know <laughs> there you I'll, go <laughs> i'll see what i can do i mean i knew there was going to be a sequel because there's a post credit scene and the post well, i know but you know for, for a sequel. you never know you never you can know say that but, you never but we're, know. We're, we're, we're working on it you know yeah. what's funny is uh i was like i'm gonna put this at the end to be continued and i'm gonna um and we, we added that uh, post credit scene with the rare candies and base tryouts and everything. That um, was so cute. And that was kinda, really cute. We added that uh, kind of at the like final hour. Um, and so that wasn't necessarily originally in the movie script, but I was like, you know, I'm going to add this scene and I'm going to put to be continued um, because I knew we were going to go to a bunch of anime conventions and show the film. And so I added that and I was like, okay, um, let's see how people react if they like the movie we'll make a sequel if if you know if it's just kind of like oh okay it came and went then okay maybe maybe there won't be a sequel um so uh we we went uh, and our first convention was akon in texas uh oh, wow. huge convention <laughs> that's um, a big one <laughs> yeah it was huge and so we showed the movie we had um i think over over 300 people in the theater watching it and it was like this on these huge screens and everything and everybody went in everybody was like screaming and clapping and cheering when it's when uh it it's started going into the you know kira's poster and like yeah. and then it said to be continued um uh, everybody was like freaking out and then um you know at the end of the at the end of the convention i had never been in a con i've gone to conventions of course um mm -hmm. and it's always been fun to like go to a convention but i've never been in one before this was right. my first time and so like the movie ended everybody like went crazy and it was just such a surreal moment um to have that many people watch your movie at once and then like love it so much and audibly like scream and cheer i was like what what's <laughs> happening but i left the theater um somebody uh, i had started talking to some people who were like talking to me about the movie um and so i was like kind of the last one out of the theater and when i left um i like there was this huge mob of people outside and i was like huh i wonder wonder what they're all waiting for like what are they doing <laughs> Um, and then I like, and I look and, uh, uh, Olivia and Hunter were standing there signing posters. And like, there was this huge crowd of people like getting like posters signed and freaking out about the movie. I was like, Whoa, what's going on? Like, it was such a crazy moment for us. Cause I, I didn't know what to expect. Um, and so 
and, and you know, I talked to a bunch of people in line, signed a bunch of posters and all that stuff. And um, everybody was like, when's the sequel coming out? When's the sequel coming out? Like going crazy. I was like, OK, I, I think we might have to make a sequel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, I, was, probably... I was testing a theory. And yeah. like, OK, people like it. You know, so, um, I think you were like secretly, subconsciously like, no, we're going to make another another movie. I don't care what everybody <laughs> says. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little. I was like, I, I would like to make one regardless, but it would be cool if people were pumped. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. I, so. you know, I want to make it, but I'm really hoping everybody else yeah. wants me to, too. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So now my plan is that Sky Hoshi is actually a trilogy. Um, so there's uh, there's going to be three movies. Um, so the second one tells, you know, um, obviously more of the story. And then we wrap up the whole story in the third one. So we're actually like planning on doing three which is exciting so the sequel starts this year and then probably the following year we'll get started on the third oh so, that's awesome yeah well, that's amazing awesome yeah. congratulations thank congratulations you. thank you <laughs> it's always nice when you when you get your first trilogy yeah yes. <laughs> trilogy as yes. they would say in france uh so james asked what are other project what other projects do you besides the sequel what other projects do you, are, are you do you have going on this, within this universe? Yeah, within the universe. Yeah. Um. So we're working on the Sky Hoshi manga right now, mm -hmm. which I'm very excited about. Um. And so at some point that'll be coming out, and um, my plan is to actually release like a series of them to really tell the whole like anime side of the story. Mm -hmm. Um. And then there's the Sky Hoshi trilogy that we're working on in the same universe. Kind of the fun thing about Pure Magic Pictures is that everything that we make is um you know it's written by me and directed by me or or my wife and so it's really coming from the same place and so and the cool thing is that you know we decided to kind of create a, a world where all of these things can kind of coexist and so um dino guru is uh an actual tcg oh, wow. um, that we made and so you can actually play dino guru um, and we'll be working on a Dino Guru movie at some point and coming out with like uh, a TCG that everybody can like buy and play, but it's an actual game. And so, um, you know, we're working on Dino Guru um, and then Time Pit uh, oh, cool. is a, you know, time travel movie that is mentioned in all of the other things. Is um, it gonna, is that gonna be like, is Marvin gonna like, factor into that a little bit more i think marvin has to be involved in some way you know <laughs> exactly yeah. Yeah, because, he's yeah. earned it uh, he's again, earned it again no spoilers <laughs> yeah no right. spoilers yeah the moment that we have with marvin is that the way at, 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 at towards the end is that what we think it is you know i cannot confirm nor deny <laughs> it. i think that um whatever you wish it is it could potentially be be careful what you wish for be careful what you wish for because it could actually be real exactly i don't, I don't feel like marvin uh is cynical enough to go and fuck with people like that so <laughs> uh you don't know what future martin martin's been through or marvin's been through yeah you don't know <laughs> you don't, uh, it also I don't, I don't, I don't, we don't I, know I, I don't i don't think that 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 marvin as a character him himself is cynical enough to play that kind of joke on them yeah, yeah so in my mind it's 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 real i i hey i mean i i think i think it could be real we're not really sure we're not it could, it could go either way at this point again yeah, like yeah. i said in my mind i'm, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. In my mind <laughs> in his head cannon rare candy spinoff yes please yeah oh no i need an entire rare candies album i'm sorry yes. three I was songs gonna say, is not I enough need, for me i need a rare candies um 30 minute animated uh adventure show oh my god like I would watch that. josie and the Puss like josie and the pussycats I that's what josie I and the pussycats <laughs> oh you know that's like one of my oh you know the the josie and the pussycats that came out in the 2000s that was like one of my all-time favorite movies i don't know if you oh, saw yeah. it and the yeah. cartoon is so good yeah oh, i love it i yeah, need that i need rare candies yeah. i need rare candies version of that there Absolutely. you go there you go <laughs> oh here we go <laughs> This song you hear is Card Battle Anthem by Rare Candies. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, that's so good. All right. That was fun. So, that, so as Rare an Candies indie filmmaker song. that you've done, we can get back into it. Because, I mean, we could talk hey, to you Thanks, all night. James. Thanks for being a Rare Candies fan. <laughs> um, but 
Oh, what about the Squatchers? The Squatchers, yes. Um, Is that the same universe? Same universe. Oh my gosh, I didn't even mention this. So um, the Squatchers is a movie that is coming out uh, in the next like month or two. Oh. Um, it, it's about Bigfoot. Oh, that's uh, awesome. It is my uh, best way to describe it is if the Goonies all uh, grew up and then went looking for Sasquatch. That's <laughs> so that, is, <laughs> that is the premise. Um, it's definitely... I did. I did make Regina listen to Justine the Pussycats. I forgot about that. We hey, we we drove to Canada. Bangs. I'm sorry. It's got bangers on it. It does. <laughs> yes. Uh, we drove to Canada and we were in the car for a very long time and we listened to a lot of things. And one of them was the Justine the Pussycats soundtrack. I was like, I was like, all right, my turn. Pass the ox. <laughs> We're going to rock out to <laughs> Josie and the Pussycats. That's awesome. Yeah. So, all right. So, <clears throat> because, I mean, we could stay here all night and talk to you, but I'm sure you have other things to do. Yeah. You're very busy. You're making movies. Also, he's also, also in New York and it's late as shit. So I'm, yes, yeah. absolutely. So we should probably, we should probably wrap this up a little. Yes. So what kind of advice would you give to like anybody who wants to be like an indie filmmaker or like what kind of things do you feel that you, um, really benefited from that would, people might not know. Yeah. Yeah. I would say like, don't wait for an opportunity. Um, if you want to make a movie, take what you got in front of you and like make something um, and then show it to your friends and have fun and then make another thing um, and just continue to work on your own craft. And um, you know, I know like I was, waiting around uh, for a moment there in time. And I was like, you know, I, I knew a couple people, you know, who make things. And I was like, oh, they were like, oh, hey, um, maybe if you get send us a script, maybe we can know a guy who knows a guy who can get you a thing. Yeah. And then you end up waiting for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you don't, it becomes more about waiting and less about making. Um, and so, you know, I, I would say anybody who wants to start making a movie, um, whatever resources you got, like, just start making stuff and have fun with it because, you know, it's art. And uh, I hate asking permission to make art. You know, um, we all have iPhones and mm -hmm. computers. We can make something cool. And so I've made so many silly things with my friends <laughs> that, um, you know, we just have fun with. And uh, over the years, I've just gotten better and better at creating films and telling stories but it just just start start telling stories you know just start just start That's telling it. stories there you yep. go there just you start. go <laughs> yeah and let, i mean i'm not going to go there i watch a little bit too much uh, true crime I was going to go to a place that we don't need to go to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm in that yeah. era. Nice. I'm in the nice. true crime era. That can that can also tell you <laughs> things about me. <laughs> All right. And so um, I guess if you could. Okay. So I'm going to ask you. This is not on our script. But I'm going to ask you this because I like to ask weird questions. If, if you could take charge of a mainstream IP, anyone you wanted, Ooh. what would you take charge of? And what would be your fir the first thing you'd want to do with it? Oh, man, that is a great question. Okay, well, I wouldn't want to touch Star Wars. Even though I love Star Wars, um, I, I, I feel like I could probably write really good Star Wars like fan fiction. And I love it. <laughs> but I would be too afraid to touch Star Wars. <laughs> um, so I would, you know, I don't want to mess with that as much as I love Star Wars. Um, but, uh, you know, mainstream. Regina said love, Josie and the Pussycat reboot. I, would, I think I would do a great Josie and the Pussycats reboot. Oh, yeah. Um, I would, I would it do needs, that. It needs one. It, it does. It, needs it one. does. It does. Yeah. It, it's um, time. It is it's time. time. Yeah. It just um, needs somebody to do it justice in, in, in a way where everybody loves it as much as the majority of us did growing up. So, I mean. Yes. Yeah, I would do a Josie and the Pussycats reboot for sure. Um, so amazing. I'm trying to think of a, of a mainstream. I mean, honestly, like, I mean, Pokemon's great. I, mm -hmm. I, I want to see like more live action Pokemon stuff. Um, I would love to do like a Pokemon movie, like a live action one would be so cool. Did um, you see Detective Pikachu? I love Detective Pikachu. It's so good. That was so good. Yeah. I loved it too. I feel like I feel like I I have what it takes. I know I know Pokemon well. Um uh, I think I think I could 
I think I could do something fun with Pokemon if, if somebody gave me an opportunity. <laughs> Is it because yeah. you want to be the very best? I, I just think I just want to be the very best like no one ever was. Catch that's them all. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I was going to say, you know, I really feel like that's the key. Like that's the secret sauce is that you that if you know the subject that you're doing like mm -hmm. it, you see like and i'm gonna i'm going to say james gunn's name I'm just gonna do it <laughs> It has been said it has been said uh but like he he knew the guard like he had read guardians of the galaxy comics right. and he knew what he wanted to do with it. he had a clear vision and they let him do it mm -hmm. and so and i think that's part of it too is like we talk all the time on the show on, on the download how like if just freaking corporate would get out of creatives way <laughs> we yeah, so yeah. much better stuff and but then you also have some creatives that are like no i want to do everything and then you're like but you can't do everything right. <laughs> you can do this much you know so right, you do right, need right. somebody to do that a lot like phil and i need james to keep us on track so <laughs> So now James has asked. <laughs> also, uh, Pure Magic had a podcast. Can you tell us how to podcast better? I don't know if that's a real. I don't know how to there, podcast James. better, but um, <laughs> I do have a podcast. Uh, it's called uh, the Pure Magic Pictures Podcast. Um, very straightforward. Mm -hmm. And um, we try to release an episode every Wednesday um and uh so yeah if you want to know what's going on in the lives of me and stephanie and all the pure magic pictures gang um that's where you can find it <laughs> that's amazing is that yeah. like is that on your like is that on a website oh or? it's uh it's on all the platforms like you know apple uh oh so spotify. anywhere you can listen to podcasts oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome Mo all right I, yeah apple and spotify for sure and then i don't potentially all the other ones i don't know no. <laughs> <All right. laughs> check it out on apple and spotify <laughs> i know it's there somewhere <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so out of all the movies that we that have been made ever, mm. uh, no, I'm just kidding. So, what do you think the worst movie sequel would be? Oh, the worst movie sequel would be. Yeah, not the best. We're talking uh, like uh, the preface to this though is, <laughs> what is a movie sequel that should never be made? Is that whole thing? Is it like mm. if if a studio made a movie sequel and they and it was to like any movie. Like, what movie would you just cringe at and just be like, what the, what the fuck? Well, I mean, I think that the Star Wars Holiday Special is cringy enough. I don't think the Star Wars Holiday Special needs a sequel. Um, Does it need an Easter special? I don't think we need an Easter <laughs> special. Um, you know, I would watch it. I would watch it so fast if there was one, but I don't think we need one. <laughs> We're, we have enough to to deal with, with the the holiday special that's true um yes to, to be fair the uh the uh uh lego holiday special was actually pretty good was it <laughs> yeah i never saw it you know i did see though um <laughs> we we we, just went, we went off the rails one night um me and regina and stephanie and i think pep were all hanging out and we were watching movies and stuff and for whatever reason we we started watching all of like the um the thumb thumb wars and thumb oh. tanic you know what we're talking about uh, yeah, yeah. Oh <laughs> those are so insane <laughs> we were like watch thumb wars and thumb tanic and like oh uh, and what were the other ones like um i can't even remember but like we there was like this giant compilation where we were like watching all of them it was just like i couldn't oh bat thumb yeah bat thumb oh well, my we couldn't gosh, look away bat thumb oh yeah. my gosh uh, they're just so insane like I, I couldn't stop i couldn't stop watching them i don't know what's happening <laughs> yeah awesome. thumb batman yeah james said schindler's list too yeah I don't. <laughs> that would, yeah that probably wouldn't work out yeah, yeah. Uh, so well, we, now, we, we, have you seen journey into the or journey to the west no oh my gosh you need to watch the movie it's okay it's um based on um i want to say chinese like it, fairy so tales it is mm. chinese lore uh yeah. so typically it's about uh the monkey god 
or the and Buddha. Buddha. Oh, okay. It's really it's a story of Buddha. But okay. like there's all these other little stories in there with it to build up to it. And he has to fight all these people. It's just really neat. And it's really like it's an off kilter. I, I always think of it as an indie film, even though oh, nice. I don't think it was. But it, it's really neat. It's just fun. They're funny, but it's a lot of action. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but sometimes it does. And it, it's just that kind of thing. It's very it's like that. So if you if you guys have another movie night, put that in there because right. it is a good movie. <laughs> it, it, it took a long time for somebody to make that movie, but like Goku is based on the Monkey King. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's yeah, based yeah. On the and the guy who plays the Monkey King in that is really good. It's it he does a really good job. So they all do. It's a really it's a good movie. I think I've seen it like seven or eight times. Oh wow. My husband loves it. He's <laughs> like he he's the one that. I watch it with first and then every now and then, like every six months we have to watch it. So it's like yes. you know, one of our things. So, oh yeah, <laughs> Kung Pao 2 or Monty Python You 2. know, Kung Pao, yeah. I'm disappointed that there's not a Kung Pao 2, specifically <laughs> because they advertise it in the first one. <laughs> they were making a sequel, man. I wanted that so bad. She's like, we'll meet many more times in the sequel. And there's like never a sequel. I'm like, ah. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess he was making a sequel for it, but... um he lost the rights to the movie that he was uh, uh, superimposing it on. Oh. Because, yeah, because the, um, the 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 rights holder, uh, like the original rights holder, um, saw what he did with Kung Pao, and they were like, well, we don't want you to disrespect our film, so we'll take ah. it. Like they sued um. the rights back, so he can, he can do the film. Hey, I will give him permission to do a version of Sky Hoshi any day. <laughs> If he there did a go. Kung Pao version of Sky Hoshi, I would die. I love Kung Pao so much. Oh. Uh, would but you, like, he if to you do it at his age now, because he's yes, obviously not as ripped as he is as he was back then. Yeah, it's like yeah. you think about it, right? Like if he goes, if he were to go and make that film, right? He yeah. would be like you know the fat version of himself that he is in uh, in Better Call Saul. Yeah, you know, but like as a Kung Fu master, right? Uh, and and one hundred percent, the main villain of Sky Hoshi at that point would hey, be um, be amazing. Would be <laughs> it would be Betty one hundred percent. Betty, let me know if you see a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i could quote that movie all day i love it so much okay taco so... bell taco bell product, <laughs> product placement by taco bell. bell yeah and chorito nacho, nacho burrito. burrito yeah okay phil we're children we're children i'm i i'm okay now i'm I'll like stop. trying to channel some james <laughs> chosen literally one. <laughs> i'm coming as you chosen can see one. phil doesn't he doesn't he doesn't care oh. uh <laughs> Do you want to ask the 10 hour flight question? Absolutely do. All right. So if you were on a 10 hour flight, mm. who would you want to sit next to? Um, now, this question and, and why uh, this question, anyone, it it, it 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 refers to anybody. So Ooh. dead or alive, if you had 10 hours to sit and have a conversation with anybody that ever existed, who would it be? Can't be your wife. Okay. <laughs> she is the think, only one it cannot be. It's all right, all somebody right. else. We've had somebody um, do that. So it's like <laughs> you're like, all right. No. Um I would definitely I would easy one would be Steven Spielberg for me. Um I just like if I would love to just like talk to him about everything. <laughs> and be like, so tell me everything about Jaws. <laughs> okay, now now that you've told me everything about Jaws, now tell me everything about ET. <laughs> All right, thanks. Okay, now tell me everything about Jurassic Park. <laughs> I'd be like, okay. What about batteries not included? I think, oh my God, yes, so good. <laughs> I think like that would be the greatest flight of my life and the worst flight of his life. <laughs> is what that would be. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, that, hey, we never <laughs> said it would be the best flight. We just said, who would you like to sit yes. on? <laughs> I would love that. I don't think he would so much, but hey, I'll take it. Hey, he hasn't been on here for us to interview him, so you don't know. He might. He might be like, he might, oh, I really you know? like that Kalani kid. Yeah. He might, you know, maybe in all of his research, maybe he stumbled upon Sky Hoshi and watched it. I, there's no way to know. You don't, he no could have been knows. at a fan expo and watched it. It's a mystery know. wrapped in an enigma. That, that's a <laughs> possibility from what I hear with, with Spielberg. 
yeah I, he just, does a saying. lot of stuff like that he he's really he's this he's a film assassin not assassin he's a film ninja like he ninjas in and sees yeah. things and then ninjas out so well, i'm just saying i don't know how he can do it at his age but he does it i'm so. just saying i mean christopher lloyd could have seen uh sky hoshi he was right there mm -hmm. yep christopher lloyd could have told Steven yeah, there Spielberg. you go yeah or michael j fox was there yeah. too i'm there just there you go there you go they might have all seen it together i yeah. love this film <laughs> yeah <laughs> this Great, Scott. film this has film's changed amazing. my life <laughs> <Come> here, <Marty! laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so most important question we're going to ask you in the whole thing what are you nerding out on right now oh yes those legos is what i'm nerding <laughs> out on those are amazing <laughs> wait who is it which one who are those people the, Doc. Yeah, Doc, Doc and Marty. Yeah. Oh, Doc and Marty. I thought you were like showing us some of the friends from the friends apartment. It's so good. Show what us am I... that. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're I'll building see. the friends yeah. apartment. Show yes, us. Finished up the bag. Oh okay. Uh, so I have one more bag left, so it's gonna go in the next week. But as of oh, right okay. now, uh, we've got the girls' apartment so far. Ooh. Nice, nice. Let me uh, let me go let me go big screen for a second here, just so we can see it. But oh, yeah, cool. so. Very nice. I just finished the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then we have the uh, the lanai kind of. Yeah. Escape thing right there. We've got their closet. Uh, of course, entertainment center with the uh, poster in the back and their two rooms. Uh, now, outside of that, they also, you know, their little, little living room scene right here. Where mm -hmm. that and then it sits in here. So you pop that in there. Oh, that's so cool. Right. It's like it's very own sunken li sunken living room. Right. And then um yeah. <laughs> Phoebe? Phoebe. Okay. I could I, I can't see her, but I know she has blonde hair and I'm it's, pretty <laughs> sure she's the only blonde. It's the it's it's the ring light. Hold on, let me turn that off. All right. Okay. Oh yeah. All right, so we got Phoebe. Smelly cat. Smelly, Smelly cat. <laughs> oh, is that Monica? Monica. Uh, ugh. uh, Ewan McGregor. Yes, that is Ewan McGregor. Oh, no, no, no. Jennifer Aniston, Rachel. It's Jen it's, it is Rachel. It's because her hair is up. If she, <laughs> if they'd had the hair down with the Rachel cut, I would have known. My boy Ross. There we go, Ross. We were on a break. Yeah. Uh, got this little thing here. Um, okay. I know, right? Uh, actually, um, Phoebe's sculpture is in the last bag. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Is there a Marcel the monkey? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, is it the, can you put the turkey on her I, head? I, I, it, I, I don't think you can. That is a shame. That is an iconic. No, you can't put it on the head. Oh, yeah. And there's like no space. What they should have did is put like the hole on the bottom right there. So you could stick yeah. it on top of the head. Yeah, yeah that would have been awesome. Oh, well. Oh, well, Lego has disappointed me yet again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. It was Darn you, great. Legos. <laughs> One thing. No, that's <laughs> awesome. Back just to show everybody who hasn't seen it before, but that's the hallway. So between the two wow. apartments. Right. With a spoon with some ice cream. <laughs> I know, right? All the Easter eggs. Uh, Is the there a trifle? <sighs> wow. The um, boys you know, if that was like, I think that like, that's the only thing that they could afford. Not the actual apartment size, but the Lego apartment yeah. in New York. It, so. it, 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 somebody did like the math and said like, if you look at their jobs, yeah, you know, compare in comparison to like the apartments that they had, there's no way that they could have afforded it even back then. <laughs> right. <laughs> they would have all been dead. But anyway... <laughs> Well, that's awesome. That looks yeah. so cool. I can't wait for the Big Bang Theory version. So. Yeah, oh, my God. If they come out with Big Bang Theory, I'm buying that like instantly. <laughs> oh, and then, of uh, course, they have the, uh, the canoe. Yeah, the canoe. You got to have that's the canoe. Um, all right. So we're going to do some wrap-up questions. So let's get, let's get uh, Kalani back up there. Absolutely. Kalani, I've got the hardest questions you are ever going to be asked. All right. I'm Indian. prepped. I'm primed. And then I've got one last question that that you're actually getting a sneak peek for because we're going to do it at Gem State. But I thought I'd ask you that question oh, as well. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, 
I'm ready. Oh, yes. Hit me. Yes, the question that she has. All right, let me switch me. here real quick. Uh, all right, I'm back on. You guys can see my face again. So there we go. <laughs> Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I'm gorgeous, darling. You're gorgeous. Yes, yes. I feel I feel so great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so silly. Stop it. I know, right? Uh, so what is your favorite kind of taco? Favorite kind of taco. Uh yeah, I like me a good chicken taco, you know. Mm. There's a there's a taco truck just in front of my apartment here. They make really good chicken tacos, you know. Do you like the shredded or like the chunks? Uh, the ones I get here, it has like the little chunks. It's not, oh, yeah. but I, See, yeah, I the like shredded's too. good too. You know, the birria tacos are insane too, though. Mm -hmm. Those are really good. Those are, it's really a tie. Good. It's a tie. <laughs> uh, well, the birria tacos actually, because when you can dip it, you mm -hmm. know, game changer. I changed my answer to that one. That's <laughs> the birria tacos. Yeah. Um, so, a uh, follow up question because you're talking about birria. Have you ever had traditional birria before? I believe so. Okay. Um, if you know the difference between birria that you get at a store and like uh -huh. at a restaurant and traditional birria is, right? Yeah. Uh, well, maybe. What What is what is traditional? Traditional birria is goat. It's goat. Yes, I've had the goat. Yes. Typically, yeah. typically for 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 Latinos, like you usually won't find that in most restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, if you go to a wedding or a quinceanera, they'll okay. usually have traditional birria. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, I worked on a food show called View and Shoe, and we went um, all over the place. And so we ended up at a taco truck in L.A. and okay. they did like traditional birria tacos. And so we, I had the goat. I had the goat one. It was really good. And it was the goat, right? It was yeah. the goat. <laughs> totally the goat. Yes. That's awesome. That that's, is that's so pretty great. cool. That's pretty cool that, that you've actually there's not very many people that I that, that we talk to that have actually had it. So. Yeah, uh, it was a fun taco truck because they had like all different kinds. So there was like a beef one, a goat one. And I believe there was like there was a third option. I can't even remember, but I had the beef and the goat and it was it was great. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I've always wanted to try like duck in oh, in like a would, taco. Like that would be the good. duck is so hard. It's like it, it it only stays like super moist and ready like for mm. like that long <laughs> yeah so that would be, be really careful so yeah so. that would have to be like fresh off a flat top so mm. yeah yeah uh any additional advice that you might have for anybody trying to get into this industry we kind of yeah. talked about that already a little like, bit yeah if you want to expand on it any, any, absolutely any expansions i mean if you don't that's fine too um yeah just uh just do your thing if you love writing right if you love uh filmmaking make make a movie make stuff with your friends um just work on yourself and work on your craft and uh have fun doing it that's my advice uh big just biggest part of that right do there is yeah. no <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly all right um so what's next for you um well i am currently working on a movie called the squatchers yeah. uh it's the you know the goonies-esque uh film about a friends who go upstate New York and they go looking for Sasquatch. Everything goes horribly wrong. Um, and it is adventure comedy film. And so that should be coming out, I believe, in like the next two months. Um, and so we're going to do like a live digital premiere. Um, and so kind of the fun thing is if you follow us on Instagram uh, or you join our Discord, um, we'll be sending out the signal at some point and let everybody know how and when they can watch it. But we, when we do a live digital premiere, we did this with Sky Hoshi. Um, it's really fun because we actually uh, essentially it's like a, a digital movie theater. And so we um, everybody goes into the theater digitally um, and we interact with people and we do like a QA. and a We'll do like a little musical um, thing before the movie and then we'll like play the film and then we'll do a, a fun thing at the end. So, um, yeah, if uh, that's what I'm working on next this is the Squatchers and that'll be streaming uh, in a digital theater near you. Pretty soon. I love the name. I have yeah. to tell you, I love the name. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun one. It's the Harry Adventure. Is it, awesome. is it a horror film? No, no, it's an adventure comedy. Adventure comedy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the reason I ask is because then Graveyard can have you on uh, conversations <laughs> in the book. Oh, nice. <laughs> he, he's, uh, our, he's our horror nerd. He, yes. he knows all things horror. Awesome. So. <laughs> all right. uh, so another hard question for you here. It may not be hard for you, but it's a hard question when you throw it out there for everyone else, right? All right. Who wins in a fight? Sky Hoshi mm. 
or Lucy from Cyberpunk Edge Runners? Oh, Sky Hoshi, hands down. She's a badass. <laughs> she can, she, uh, you know, she can defeat the syndicate. She can do it all. Mm -hmm. I, I'm with. She's it. got the pink laser gun. Yeah. And and so. and that that makes me want to watch more Sky Hoshi. Even I'm just saying. Yeah, she's she's the best of the best. Right. Because, I mean, you know, Lucy does have like filament wires that can cut through people and like 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 a hot knife through butter. <laughs> so it's that's like... true. That's true. <laughs> mm, and, butter. And, I know. Mm, butter. And she uh, and she can like remote mind hack you from like halfway across the world. You know, what's funny is um, I was uh, I asked this kid. She must have been like eight or nine or something. But I asked her, um, you know, what uh, who would win in a fight? Sky Hoshi or your? from uh spy family yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah and uh because she had just watched sky hoshi anime girl at a convention um she was pretty young maybe maybe nine's too old but anyways uh <laughs> i'm bad with ages um but uh she she was like she was thinking about it she's like oh, i think your would win i was like what why and i was like what the heck and she was like well because sky she like we've only seen her stun people and so Sky doesn't actually like like to kill people, but Yor, she's an assassin. She like gave me this really long thing. I was like, oh, wow. all right, fine. Yor will probably, <laughs> yeah, okay. Sky's too nice. I get it. I feel yeah. like she like constructed the trap, opened the door, had you walk in, had you look around for a minute and then close the door. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, I almost, cause I was like, okay, I need to get somebody who probably matches up with, with Sky a little bit better. Cause originally mm -hmm. I was like, Major Kusanagi, but I'm like Major Kusanagi's a monster, and she's like half, <laughs> she's she's like majority machine at this point. So I'm right, like, right. I don't know. That's 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 kind of an unfair fight, right? And I almost did Alina too, but I was like, uh, uh, Alina's also like mostly cyborg, so it's like mm. I don't know. I need somebody who's more human. Lucy's probably more human than than either of them, right? 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 Because it's just like it's an unfair advantage when they have like super speed, super strength. They can't like weapons don't matter because they just you know they barely feel it, and it's like right. <sighs> That's that's going too deep into the cyberpunk uh, realm. So it's like, let me let me get like a, a cyberpunk character that's still like a person. Right. <laughs> hey, good choice. Good choice. Right. Oh, I need I need it to be a fair fight for the most. Yeah. Part, right. <laughs> uh, all right. So where can everybody follow you? Where can they learn more about you? Uh, you know, if they want to support your films, anything like that, where, where, where can people find out more about you? Yeah, well, you can follow me um, on Instagram. It's just at Kalani Hubbard. Um, and that's where I post silly memes and also things uh, that I'm doing. Um, or you can follow us at Pure Magic Pictures. Um, and that's, you know, the, the page for all the movies. Um, ooh, PureMagicPictures.com. Exactly. So, um, yeah, you could go to PureMagicPictures.com. And we have our, like, um, our Discord if you want to join the Discord. We do fan theories. And we have a whole chat about, you know, Sky Hoshi and fan theories. And we have, like, a lot of fun there. Um, and we talk about all the movies and I'll just like chit chat and we like to interact with a lot of our fans and we're kind of building like a fun little community of, of folks. So, um, yeah, if you go to puremagicpictures.com, you can join the discord and chat there or our Instagram. We just like to, um, interact with our fans and, and have fun and, um, and yeah, so you can follow us on Instagram or TikTok or discord. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. And our website, puremagicpictures.com is where you can watch the actual movies that we've been talking about. Yes. So, yeah. And awesome. you definitely should be watching them because they are good. <laughs> so. Word on the street. There, uh, there's some good films. Word in this house. And I have two corgis and a mutt. So and they are corgi all going to spread the word. Corgi, corgi approved. Have, it is yeah. corgi approved. All right. Well, uh, we have, before... I have my, my question and then. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he forgets. <Yeah. laughs> so my question is. If you could be any superhero or super villain, mm -hmm. which one would you be? And what ordinary task would frustrate you? Oh, <laughs> ordinary task. Mm, okay. Um, I would go for Spider-Man. Okay. I love me some Spider-Man. You know, I just love Peter Parker. Uh, you know, I just want to web sling through the city. It's just like <laughs> there, there would be nothing cooler than that. Um, so, you know, I would definitely do that. Mm -hmm. And then an ordinary task, um, you know, what, what would, what would be hard for Spider-Man? Uh, relationships don't go so well for him, but. <laughs> That's true. <Relationships> don't. <laughs> but, I'm wondering uh, like laundry. Cause you know, he's got like the sticky things on his hands sometimes. And That's so, like, true. 
Yeah, maybe just good old laundry. Yeah. You know? So yeah, uh, it, the the thing that reminded me of it was Spy uh, Superman and uh when like the Christopher Reeve Superman and he had to shave. Uh, oh. with, with his eyes because like and i was like man that's got to be frustrating for him because he can't use razors like how long did it take him to figure that oh out? that's hilarious you know? so yeah. i was like what other would be frustrating <laughs> i was gonna say for spider-man what ordinary task um interacting with human beings without having social anxiety yeah, yeah. that's true there he you does go. have major <laughs> social Poor anxiety. guy yeah, <laughs> I just watched Spider-Man 2 recently and he cannot catch a break in that film, man. <laughs> no, he can't. <laughs> yeah. That's Peter in the comics. Uh, he he He's quiet, reserved, doesn't like people. And then when he's in the mask, then he's a little bit more like, you know, quippy and funny and jumping up because he gets a little more of his personality. But it's also because he's behind a mask and nobody knows it's him. So, right, right. Yeah. So that's awesome. Well, yes. yeah, that's all we have. I mean, we we really kept you, <laughs> but we had a lot. So. Hey, I had a lot of fun. This is good for me. I enjoyed it. I uh, enjoy hanging with you guys. Good. Well, good. That's awesome. Thank you so well, much. Absolutely. I, we, we, we enjoyed you being on right here. Um, before we uh, we do our little thing, because we uh, we didn't warn you about the dance party, but we're going to do that here in a moment. Okay. Uh, so just whatever you have handy. Whatever I got. If you have the pink, you know. Uh, Sky Ocean Gun Handy. I mean, I'm not saying I want to see it. Uh, <laughs> stickers, toys, activities, whatever <laughs> you have around you, just make it dance on screen when you hear All right. I'll see creepy what I babies can do. that uh, Bill loves. Uh, yeah, you're a creepy baby. Uh, before we do that, <laughs> Frey, uh, give us your pluggables, anything you want to plug out there. Where, where can people find you outside of this <laughs> distance nerding sphere? Gosh, I feel like I've done this so much lately. This week? Yes. <laughs> All right. Third show this week? <laughs> That's right. I, I feel like I, I think my husband's starting to get jealous. All right. <laughs> you can find me on here. I'm uh, on Distance Nerding and do the download every Tuesday. I have my own channel called Frey Girl. And I do. Uh, we have Corgi Shorts because Corgis are short. And yeah. um, we also do this thing called classified it's where we take your favorite fandoms and we classify them into uh, D, D classes we have a, a sister show called journals of the classes where we actually go through each class and the sub classes in that and we just talk about each one so if you don't really know a lot about the D, &D classes but you really like the fandoms you can watch the sister show learn all about the classes and tell us how wrong we are. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Uh, you can find that. Uh, yeah, I do stuff on Kyber Cave Productions. Uh, most of my stuff's on hiatus right now or being filmed currently. So I'm not really on that, but you can watch me. I am on shows on that. Uh, but yeah, you can find me there. I'm on Discord. I'm in several servers. I'm not in the uh, pure magic server but that probably will change soon <laughs> so, i'm probably going to be in that server like tonight <laughs> right <laughs> so uh so yeah so but yeah you can catch me there uh i'm on instagram i'm on blue sky i'm on uh x even though i'm not really on x uh, i do occasionally look at facebook i'm on tiktok until they tell me i can't be anymore uh <laughs> and yeah that's me All so right. thank you guys so much uh and of course, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know who we are because more than likely you've been on this channel before. But of course, you can connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, Threads, YouTube, Discord, MySpace, Vine, GeoCities, Friendster, Second Life, AIM, Farmers Only, Christian Mingle, OnlyFans. Uh, it's only pictures of uh, Aaron Watson's feet and mandals, uh, the beard, and James's glasses sitting on a table seductively. Yeah. <laughs> what with the come hither look with yes. the come hither look yeah uh and if you if you of course if you'd like us to break up with your boyfriend girlfriend significant other pet schoolyard bully annoying neighbor or just tell us how much you enjoy us wish uh enjoy us hate us or wish the internet would consume us completely and spit us out at the feet of um an unnamed anime villain maybe frieza i don't i, I don't know <laughs> Throwing that one out there, of course, ladies and gentlemen, you can send us an email at dist. I mean, I can't believe you put that space in there, so you have to like not say something in between that. I didn't actually put the space in there, it was the font, but I, I'm gonna go with it and snerting at.
AOL.com, and we will read your email on the show. So, of course, ladies and gentlemen, that is it from us. It is now time for the dance party. So let yeah. us get this going. It's Wonder Woman who had too much uh, salt. <laughs> Yar! Me be pulling in the pirate, touching the booty. Distant nerding. Yeah! Oh my god! Yeah. No! <laughs> Fucking holographic Charizard? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm fucking jealous. <laughs> I don't know where mine is. I have one. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I'm here to kill Spider Man. Is that Carnage? Yes. Wait, oh, wait, where yes. is she? Is. There oh, she is. Yeah. yeah. We'll see everybody next week! Bye.